Happy holidays, hey, Scrooge. Merry Christmas, you redheaded bastard. Well, we're celebrating this first, think about it, the first Christmas season of real bad movies. The first. I mean, this is a special. Tis the season for giving and so much, and so much getting. And what we're getting is a bunch of shit in my stocking. A bunch, dude. A oh bunch of just God. craptastic films that I'm. I was excited to show you this film tonight. Yeah. And are you still? Are you still happy? Are you happy with yourself? I was suffering, so I was really yeah. suffering. So good. You know, when you think about, uh, you know, all the beauty that that the holiday season brings. Yeah. Definitely not. Not something like this is not something that would contribute to. The no, holiday. you wouldn't want. You wouldn't want a copy of this underneath your <clears throat> Christmas tree in your living room. You know, it's just think about it. You've been asleep all night. You're thinking, oh. Christmas morning, it's coming tomorrow. All of a sudden, you wake up. Oh, it's Christmas time. You run down the stairs. Your parents greet you. Oh, well, hey, AC. Merry Christmas. And then you instantly run over there to tear into those presents. You don't even care about any of the other presents because you know they're just shit. Uh-huh. Your parents never loved you. You just run over to that little box. You know what it is. It looks like a DVD case because it is a DVD case, and you rip right through it, and you realize that your life is now complete because you got a copy of tonight's movie. Santa with Muscles, starring the one and only Hulk Hogan. Oh, I thought you were going to say Myla Kunis, because I think, you know, she's more well-known now. Well, for anyone who's a wrestling fan out there, it's actually, it's it's Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Please explain. So, in the glory days of Coke, and just Coke, and so much just working Wait, out the, the, steroids. Uh, the drug, or the... Uh, oh, the drug. The we're drug. Tra- when, we're, when we're talking about glory day WWF, now... Okay, so how how big are you into like knowing pop culture from like the eighties? Wait, besides... wait, wait! Before we get into this, we still got to introduce the show. Oh, I thought I could just babble on, and not have to talk about this movie. We'll let you babble on, but let's Fine, introduce you it. Me, so. I'm AC. I'm Scrooge. And these are really bad movies. I thought I could get away with that. got 1996's <sighs> masterpiece just... the year i was born by the way and it's, ah, it's sad to think that this atrocity came out because i think jingle all the way came out 97 ah yeah okay i was gonna later. say 96 which is funny because I, I would make you almost wonder do you think that someone thought of this or saw it at some capacity and thought this is garbage so maybe if we do something similar it could with be. someone else who's giant and you know muscle bound and maybe make it better mm-hmm. and then they're like oh Let's do Arnold. That movie is actually a movie, though. It's a yes. bad movie. This movie, you know, which we'll talk because I can. We'll, we'll, we'll have our own talk about. We'll discuss that one. it. Yeah. So this was a. Str- I'm gonna guess straight to VHS film. Yes. In uh, the late '90s, we'll we'll discuss more. But to get back to what you were talking about before the theme song played, yeah, this it, is starring Hulk Hogan. Hulk explain, Hogan. Please explain. So for anyone out there who's ever been into wrestling, or at least knows a little bit about wrestling, you've got, you know. Hulk Hogan, he became real famous, you know, to this level where making movies seemed like a justifiable offense in the 80s during the, this WWF tenure. Now, during that time, you know, the, the great names of that era were obviously doing just so much Coke and roids <laughs> that I bring it up because... Wait, Coke as... Please Coke. Oh, decipher. Yeah, the, Coke or Coke, Coca-Cola? No, no. Oh, okay. They, they did Coke as much as they drank Coca-Cola. So we're talking about, ah. you know, white powder. You know, okay. Sugar, actual drugs, powdered sugar for those at home. Actual yes, drugs, actual drugs. We're talking about the wonderful, you know, China white, all that good stuff. The the, the good old uh, powder, the uh, no sugar, <laughs> the booger sugar, all that good stuff. The when it comes to the '80s, the big names. Any time that they were called, uh, what's called cutting a promo. If you're not familiar with yes, that at yes, all, yes, yes. Cutting a promo for anyone out in the audience is when a wrestler would go on the mic and start talking and shit about other wrestlers and everything. And that's where you would really test to see if someone was entertaining or not. When most people called out Hulk Hogan, because a lot of people hated Hulk Hogan because they thought he was a showboating, arrogant, always about me, which he was for the most part. I was going to say, yeah, they're they're about right. Uh A lot of people hate Hulk Hogan, but they would always be so jacked. And they would always say, Coke Hogan. So if you go back and you listen to Randy Savage shooting on uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, the Iron Sheik, 
Uh, who's the other person I just heard there? It was a couple of them that always, when they don't, they don't say Hulk Hogan, they say Hulk Hogan. Oh, God. They, they say Hulk Hogan. So I just call him Hulk Hogan. So Hulk Hogan stars in this flick, and I did a little bit of research while you were giving that backstory. This was released in limited theaters in That's November awful. of 1996. That is so bad. I don't know why. Why? It's it's terrifying to think, and I thought it would be a straight-to-VHS thing because I think in the late 90s that was when, the, the, you know, Rental stores and VHS yes, they were not stores dead. were getting big, and that makes sense. But it came out, and it, so the funniest thing about IMDb is it says it came out in limited theaters. It made two hundred and twenty thousand dollars in total. Oh my god! There is no budget here. Um, possibly, if I bought IMDb Pro, they would tell me the budget, but I, I I'm good. I can sleep well at night. Not I think I did about a that. trial of ID uh, oh, IMDb Pro, really? yeah, Pro, because I think at the time I thought it was gonna help me with like something, and that yeah, I don't think I. I don't think that. it really does anything too much, but anyways, uh, so it's the first thing it says right here. The release date was Brazil, so I'm I'm gonna assume that Brazil was a big market for this film because it looks like that's where a majority of their uh, their because mo- it was only released in four it was only released in a movie theater setting in four countries the USA Brazil Germany and Spain and then down yeah. here it gives all the alternate titles to places like Lithuania <laughs> Romania well, Russia you, you know why because probably they were like these people don't understand English so good you know, so well so they'll just watch so good. this <laughs> as I mock bad yeah. sorry I don't even know how to speak English myself so yeah. who really cares anymore but they they uh they don't understand the English language as well as I do uh, just as much as badly as I do so they I think that they're like oh we'll throw these in some foreign markets so we'll definitely pick this crap up yeah because they're like Oh, Hulk Hogan. I know Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Like, so I think a good segue to go into this is that why the hell is Hulk Hogan even in the, a movie? Well, to go back to that, it would be as simple as for anybody who's a little bit on the younger side of things and doesn't know enough about Hulk Hogan. Yeah, if we got younger yeah. listeners out there, you know, yeah, very young more, listeners. Think more like, so Hulk Hogan was like the rock or John Cena of his age, of the 80s and 90s, where he became such a charismatic wrestler that was literally adored by like the whole nation and fans around the world. He became mm-hmm. like one of, if not the most popular wrestler of the eighties. So he was to the point where his face was on everything. He was doing everything, you know, uh, he was doing, doing the wrestling events. He was doing, uh, you know, uh, not thinking prime time, thinking of, um, I- interviews, like a late night, late night talk yeah, show. Like he was interviews. a uh, social, I yeah. think they're called like celebrity. He was, you know, he, he trans, he was like, well, I think he was one of the first, in my opinion, to like transcend just the wrestling and became like a celebrity. So I think that's obviously the powers that be, the money that be was like, mm, yeah, the money. We should start throwing this face and name, and I was also big and jacked. I mean, Hulk in his prime with all of his roids, he was a big freaking dude. Yeah, he was about six five, almost three hundred pounds muscle, and so. And his you know. on screen though, I feel like it. So he had some films in the early '90s. One was called Mr. Nanny, which you did bring up. Yeah. Uh, there was one you were saying, Suburban Commando, as well. Yeah, I saw this. No Holds Bar, I think, was in the 80s, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was actually his first... Um, 1989, yes. That was his first uh, lead role. Yeah. Lead role. Because the first, I'm pretty sure the first film he ever did was, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're on IMDb, yeah. was Rocky Three, where he pretty much played himself. Yes. 1982, he was... Yeah. Uh, it, before that, he was in CWA Wrestling, which is obviously yeah, first wrestling, wrestling yeah, so. But I know that besides, because you got to think about it, Hulk Hogan was in a lot of things as Hulk Hogan. Like you said, Muppets in Space, he yeah. was in. Yeah, he was like cameos as himself. Yep. Gremlins 2, he was in <laughs> for yeah. some reason. <laughs> because same thing, just, you but know, cameo. His acting career did not take off. And I think, no. like I was telling you tonight over dinner, romantic dinner yes, as well. He's very, he looks so handsome on the other side. Oh, yeah, with all the scruff and all the long the hair. The scruff and then that... That orange chicken sauce was rolling down your face. I just wanted to jump over the table and eat you. Yeah, exactly. But listen, we were talking about uh, over dinner about how there was this big boom in the... I don't know when it really started. You might help me out when it started. But the big boom started, I would say, in the late 80s to the 90s where they took all of these macho action stars and put them... I mean. It's different for Hulk Hogan because unlike Schwarzenegger, wasn't Schwarzenegger was a bodybuilder? Bodybuilder, correct? Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he he had some. Stallone wasn't a bodybuilder, right? Well, I mean, not like professional bodybuilder, but his thing. It. Yeah. His yeah. thing he was, was his he was always in was. shape, but his claim yeah. of fame was Rocky. That's, That's what, what, what I'm saying. So he was, and he wasn't even an actual professional boxer. Yeah. He learned how to fight, but yeah. So but he, so it's different in this case where, I mean, 
Arnold was known as a bodybuilder, sure, but I would say in this case it's different because you have somebody like Hulk Hogan who has almost no acting experience. Yeah, none. Just, just, just this is well, this is why I say he's literally like the 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 uh, the rock of the yes. 80s and 90s yes. is because it's literally because the, the the charisma of the being in the arena, the wrestling mm-hmm. arena, that brought him to this. They thought, okay, well, if you can electrify crowds in person, you know, to the thousands, then you could do the same. To the millions, you know, watching to, uh, movies and yeah. stuff, and that's like, how, that's what I was saying is that they, there was this push to have all of these big, either action stars or, uh, like actual professional wrestlers, tough guys, bodybuilders, tough to guys, essentially, yes. put them in roles that they're not supposed to be in. He's in a family friendly film, you know, and like in this one, for example, he's Santa Claus, and then Jingle All the Way obviously yeah. did that with uh, uh, Schwarzenegger, and then the other one we were talking about was Stallone, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, yeah, an yeah. early yep. '90s flick. It's this this premise of this big beefy meaty guy shouldn't be in these situations because in that film with Stallone, it's obviously I forgot her name. She's from Golden Girls. Oh, I mean, yeah, I I honestly never saw the movie, so but I forgot which one you're talking. Like, that's the premise is like he's yeah. he's around older women, so he's older. He's around a grandma. Okay, so that's gonna be a goofy shenanigans. Then you have so much shenanigans. now him. He's playing Santa Claus around children. Oh, oh my god. god, I would I couldn't pinpoint it because obviously I don't know every movie, but I would imagine. You don't? Uh, I, sadly, I don't. I'm okay. working on it. every day. Every day, I, I stray further from God's grace because I don't know every single movie. But I'm working on it. All right, all right. Uh, so I'm. I would personally say, if I was to put some money on, I feel like it was definitely late '80s because mid '80s was still the boom of the macho. You know, like balls out and you know, all balls out. You know, crazy. Rambo, yeah, Rambo, Commando. Commando everything. So I think after the market was filled enough with what. It, what what uh, executives thought, you know, audiences wanted, wanted was, you know, big, uh, beefy action stars going crazy. I would say late 80s. First one I can think of personally is Twins because that was Arnold. Yes, yes. He was in that. Now, that didn't have to do with kids, but it was a comedy where he, and it was successful, too. It was both actually pretty. I, I thought it was kind of funny. He's got a sidekick of a, yeah, Danny, uh, Danny DeVito. DeVito. He's and it was, obviously a lot shorter. Yeah, and, and so it's in the sense Arnold's of, but it's another yeah. whack-out situation of where he's huge, dealing with other people he's not supposed to. But that was successful. And then I would say, I would say after that is when that started happening, because that's when you had Kindergarten Cop, mm-hmm. which was in 1990, mm-hmm. and then you started noticing these. And what's funny is that you that bring this up. 1998, really? Yes, yeah. 90. Kindergarten Cop was wow. 1990. I thought that was like 96 or something. Nope. Wow. That was before wow. Terminator 2. Wow, so, that blew my mind. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm thinking that that might have kickstarted the kid thing with the juxtaposition. Yes, yes. Because I think it was the same. It was the same thing where. Um, it's been the same. I'm trying to remember how far it's gone further than the 90s, but the most recent example of what we're talking about I can think of, I don't know if you ever had the misfortune of watching it, was The Pacifier with yeah, Vin so Diesel. Yeah, Diesel, but also you had The Two Fairy with, I think, Oh, the yeah, I knew The Rock, well. which, yeah. oh, God, that was, so, like, the oh, no, for, he had two. He had, first it was The Game Plan. Yes, the, the game, game plan, plan is where which that, that is I got I'm a soft thinking. spot for because I watched when I was younger and that's and is that yep that's, that's where he's a football, football player, player. Yep. yep and yep, then he yep, has yep. the kid unexpected kid oh, and then God. then the tooth fairy which that one I hated that one was bad tooth fairy pacifier really as well pacifier was a 2004 so that trope is still continued I don't know if you've had anything like recently like something there's big. probably straight to streaming straight to video right I mean like sequels like big stuff. ones of like big jacked stars like action stars doing stuff Van like Damme I know Van Damme is still making flicks I believe yeah he hasn't done anything really like too much like that because he was never a big guy anyways so his more is just like oh, I'm a martial artist and yeah. I protect families and stuff he was in it says he was in Kung Fu Panda 3 yeah he was uh, Master, Master Croc, Croc. yeah he, he, he did some lines in Master, as Master Croc in uh, Kung Fu Panda 2 and 3. Oh, he did some lines, all right. Oh, <laughs> look at you making jokes, huh? I'm out here, you That's know. That's crazy. And listen, you know, I've heard some feedback from the show, and people are, are saying specifically that I'm the more serious one and you're the more... You know, joking. Oh, that's crazy. Lighthearted. I would I've heard, never. Agree I've heard with it that. through the grapevine, huh. and uh, you know, I can I can be funny when yeah. I want to. Just, so, well, just a disclaimer for anyone at home. I actually just fed him that on a piece of paper. He did. Yeah, yeah. you can take so, the, take yeah. the paper back. Yeah. All right, thanks. Man. Um, it, it so, worked, it worked great, though. so the the whole premise is just putting the whole comedic premise. If you very loosely yeah, using loose, the word loose. comedic, more like if you were telling a joke at a party. 
And then you thought, oh, that's really funny. Now let me go write that down Make on a napkin. A, yep. And... <laughs> let me go write that down on a napkin with like lipstick or something. Yeah, it's very, very. The, the term comedic is thrown around very loosely with this, yeah. but it's the whole premise of putting somebody who shouldn't be in a situation, who a tough guy like like Hulk Hogan should be at the gym. He shouldn't be yeah. around children. Yep. Well, he definitely shouldn't be around children. Yeah. But in this case, as Santa Claus, he shouldn't be around children. So that entire joke is made into an hour and 37 minute movie yeah. which we'll be talking about tonight. Where, you know a great way to put it is like is that when snl saturday night live you know, yeah snl they have such a horrible ratio of good bad movies i think the only good movie they ever made in my opinion was blues brothers the first one yeah you ever seen i it? like wayne's world I'm oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah wayne's, wayne's world, world too sorry i forgot about that but every other one the ones that all tanked were all the same thing it was one joke or one sketch that they said let's stretch that out I for, feel that with for Wayne, like an hour and a half. That's how I feel. Wayne's World. I don't think it's a it's a good movie, but it's fun. Yeah. Like it's like you know, it's not like I'm. It's not painful to watch, but I think right. it's fun. But that's different. That's it's fun. So like this is something where <laughs> we'll talk about. What I was gonna say, but when you think about it, this might be something where you could have a sketch of something funny of like oh some big buff dude who's Santa. Yeah. This he, could be he, an SNL sketch where it's Hulk Hogan as Santa. as Santa. And it's just a couple minutes and it's him like just beating up parents and stuff like that. That actually be funny. That would be funny. This is not funny. No. No. And you're <laughs> no. right. The fact you just said that that blows my mind. It does yeah. feel like an SNL movie right. yeah. in this sense. Because it's been it's actually when you think about it like when you shrink it, it actually would be funny if you think about it. Like imagine if you had a sketch where the Santa was like this big buff, like roided out dude who, I don't know, it could have been funny. Like think about it, it could be someone who's like, it's his work release program or whatever. And the yep. whole sketch is just him like trying to keep it together. And eventually yep. he just loses it and starts like, a fight or something. And it just, you can, you know, for comedic effect or whatever, but do it, yeah. it's literally that and then stretched into an hour and 37 minute movie. And real quick, because there's not much to talk about tonight, so um, just As chime usual. in real quick. I just typed in some SNL movies. There was Night at the Roxbury. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I've seen bits, and that I've heard that's that was the awful. exact same thing. It, yeah. it is it is taking a joke which was funny on SNL and yeah. then making it into a full length movie which yeah. just didn't work. Will Conan, Ferrell and the guy, what I forgot his other guy's name, but uh, Will Ferrell and Chris Catan. Yeah, Chris Catan. Yeah, yeah. The, he the, was in a really good remake of The House on Haunted Hill. That film got a lot of shit. The last part of it sucks, mm-hmm. but it's actually pretty pretty good that's the only thing i really like him in but coneheads as well that was also yeah. another one that they did that one failed too that did pretty bad i haven't seen it i think i saw it as a kid and there's yeah. you know i don't know if you've been down to the uh baseball games downtown but there's always the one dude with the conehead no, i've not been along last never... time i was doing it they had the wing race oh the there's head. one dude who sells beer there and he's got a conehead oh. thing which is the only thing i remember That's buffalo good. new york ladies and gentlemen we've got some represent some, represent some creatures out here 716 <laughs> uh so wayne's world of course we yeah, talked about those. they made two of those have you yeah, seen the both? second one have you seen the second one i I don't think so, unless the second one was the one that had the cameo by Robert Patterson. Uh, Robert Patterson. <laughs> Robert Patrick, sorry. I, I, Robert uh, Patrick is yes. the T-1000. There's a scene where yes, he comes up and he said, have you seen this boy? And it's a picture of John Connor. He's holding it up, and he's dressed in the cop uniform, and they like freak out and drive away from him. Yes, I think that's the... I don't remember. Those movies are so yeah, interchangeable. I was going to say, okay, no, I don't think I've seen the second one. And there's a couple so, other ones, too. Obviously, it's Pat was one. That was another travesty that they messed up. Yeah, have you heard of The Ladies' Man? No, that sounds With, awful. Uh, oh, the dude from Mean Girls. Oh, God, what's his name? Don, not Don... The black, the black guy? Yeah, Tim Meadows. That's yeah, what Tim it was. Meadows. I was going to say Don Cheadle, but no, it was... Tim Meadows. Yeah, he gets he gets mixed up with Don Cheadle all the time. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then Mc, yeah, Mc yeah, McGruber. McGruber. That was another. Uh, I thought that was a dumb. My my opinion, that was a dumb sketch. And then they made a movie. And they they made stretched a it movie. out. So that that's basically what we're talking about here: taking a small idea and just These tropes. stretching it out. This could have easily made like a little skit, mm-hmm. short film, maybe a cute little VHS tape or yeah. something. That's like twenty short, minutes. No, actually, a good idea. Even a short film, like ten minutes. Like, yep. just something. Wrap it up. That could be funny. But, but no. no, this film. Film is produced by executively. It says right here, yeah, executive. co-produced executively by the Wolf of Wall Street's Arr! Jordan Jordan Belfort. Funny enough, that is. Which real quick, have you seen the Wolf of Wall Street? Of course. Which, uh, I mean, does it really surprise you watching that that 
he was busy making movies like this. Yes. So that and he got caught in ninety nine, I believe. So well, you know why he got caught, right? Is because he made this movie. That's why he went to jail. Because he made he <laughs> the authorities make, are yeah. keeping an eye on this flick. <laughs> they, yeah. They, as soon as they saw that, see, the guy was like, you know, uh, insider trading and stealing money and you know, lo- and uh, ripping people off. But it was as soon as the cops saw standing with muscles and it had his name right there, then they instantly. That's when they uh, they sprung into action. And said, we got to arrest this motherfucker. God <laughs> damn it, this movie. Um. <laughs> I see the one thing that I don't like about this movie is like so you can make genuinely fun family films like right. we've talked how uh, you you don't like Home Alone right correct you were personally no but will you admit that like it's an actual movie it's yeah, made no, out no, no, like no, yeah, a movie yeah. but do you notice also this in is the literally film, just, it's not a movie I just get down with yeah yeah all. but it's a you, movie can you admit that the the characters the way things are they don't feel like it's not like a little kids movie. This film, no. the the dialogue, the way they act, for example, which we'll get to, um, I forgot his name, Don Clark, the guy who played Bob in that '70s show. Oh yeah, yeah. He's in this film playing an elf Lenny. the whole time. Lenny, <laughs> he he talks and he acts like how you would talk in front of a little kid, like yep. I did it. You know, yeah. you switch your behavior in front mm-hmm. of children. I mean, you probably not. You probably no. I just are just brutal try to kick them right in the face. <laughs> but like discipline that premise like of like okay you're gonna act differently for this whole film is written around that it's almost like a loopy fantasy kind of cartoon thing you don't do that in a film like this well i mean i guess with the premise of santa with muscles sure but when i think of like him and like a family friend i think of like how arnold interacted with kids in kindergarten top he was still tough he wasn't treating them like little babies like talking to him it was a there was the it was playing on the juxtaposition of him being huge and muscular yep and then dealing with kids so i think that's number one where this film goes wrong there's a lot of ways this film goes wrong but i think the the whole premise of like it's it's essentially a cartoon but a family friendly right you know but it doesn't know what it wants to be because it's like it's literally like a um episode of the week like trying to like i don't know if you've ever seen the old batman tv show mm-hmm. the adam west batman i'm mm-hmm. talking like the 60s do you I've remember, do you remember the the villains from that they're really you know i just saw one episode it was joker okay breaking out of prison okay but that's good fun, we but. could still use that because think it's it was colorful it was over the top it was yes. meant to really yeah, yes, be yes. just campy and ridiculous and all most of the villains that weren't like the the major villains of the batman comics caesar were all Romero. ridiculous i think the same with caesar Romero. yeah caesar like romero joker. was a joke he was but, just like great like he was oh, super yeah. over the top and uh-huh. fun yeah. so he was but like take they had like oh that was oh king tut was one of the villains <laughs> king tut okay i bring this up because this movie doesn't know what the hell it wants to be because you've got like villains that are like like reject Batman series villains that have some weird costumes that are, are kind of like they're, they say they call them scientists. Yeah, it's all over the place. So it says it kind of wants to be a cartoon, has the cartoon humor, but then it's also like I mean, what the what, it doesn't know what the hell is going on. It 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 has no clue. So That's I guess why it's, like, it's just been stretched out. It's just a you know a five minute joke that got stretched out way too long. So the film begins with. <laughs> This little girl, she's like reading. It's I think a letter to Santa. Essentially, she's writing it. So you know how in these movies when you're she's writing, she's writing it, and, and she's got to read it out loud. She's got to narrate obviously. it, obviously, to the yeah. audience. So, and she's writing this, and it, essentially, she says because this is my second time seeing it, and it's one of the first things I remember. Because listen, when I watch movies, I tune uh-huh. out like halfway. You know this. Yes. And she's writing to Santa, basically saying, "Hey, I'm an orphan. There's a lot of orphans at this orphanage." And there's an evil guy down the street. His name is da- uh, Ebner Frost, I Frost. believe. So Ebner Frost. Yeah, Frost. Like you said, he's a, he's a Batman villain. Yeah. That's that's his whole premise, and he's he's evil. For no and, reason, too. That's the yeah. best part. For but nothing. But the funniest thing about it is this man is rich. We see his yeah. mansion. We, Filthy rich. He still wants more. Yep. Maybe maybe there's like a deep philosophical meaning behind this. Oh, that, absolutely. Like, even this if is you're so at, deep. it's like Jeff Bezos. Even if you're at the top, you still want more. Right, you Jeff. Know? Wherever you're out there, this movie. I know you're you. listening. I to know this. you're listening <laughs> to this podcast right now. His fire, listening to this podcast, and you it's know what, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. I'm sick of your shit. He's sick, honestly, because I see I see Ebner Frost, and uh-huh. I just see you. I just see Jeff's face. It's just Jeff, right there. That's it, and. Jeff so, Frost. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Frost. <laughs> Jeff Frost. Jeff Frost in the house. Oh, he sounds like a 
Jeff Frost this sounds like, like a DJ. Yeah, it's it DJ sounds like name. a bad like musician or something. Like, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Frost. No, that's the guy. That's the guy who was always telling you about when he's DJing on the weekends. And he's like, "Yo, man, you should check out my show." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, I'll be there, man. I'll be yeah. there, absolutely, man. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going no, to Jeff Frost's no. show. No, no. That's when you, you throw out his business card in the track. <laughs> So Jeff Frost, I guess, runs the whole kingdom of Whoville or wherever the hell this place is. Yep. We, we yep. don't know. Nope. I don't. We know it's in California because of his driver's license, right. and you could just tell this is this is in California. But no explanation. He's just there. So, but he's super evil from the girl's uh, self-narrating letter. Yeah, and so once she fucking stops writing this shit, and which is funny actually that we talk about Jeff Bezos. This is around the time when Amazon started to come out. Amazon was a bookseller way back in the day, and I do remember in my old times, if I could sit back and think, I remember ordering books from Amazon in the early 2000s. I don't Dude, know if you did at all. I hated books. So. Uh, there I it is. I hate reading and I hate learning. So I remember my mom. Uh, That's why I talk so well. It was that and eBay, because eBay was, was eBay, that was, yes. eBay was my eBay friends, days. but not, not Amazon. So this is around the time in the late 90s. So, you know, of course she's writing a letter and she's not on her laptop. Or, but there there is good examples, though, of, of movies that have, like, laptops. Like uh, yeah. Goosebumps, for an example, in, I think, 97 or 98. They made an episode, and it was a, it was a laptop, and it looked like full-fledged, like, looked like a MacBook, but mm-hmm. I think it was all, like, made up. It's like how Star Trek, like, alludes to future I technology gotcha. and stuff Just like that. Just keep in mind, though. She's an orphan, so that's probably why she doesn't have a laptop. Ah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm So sorry. she's sitting there, she's writing, and then eventually we cut to Hulk Hogan. Hi, cause, so she says Santa at the end, yes. and then they show Hulk Hogan. Yes. And you see him. So the first shot I remember, you see him like opening up bushes. bushes, looking around, and like looking and seeing somebody. And I was like, is he, is he spying on this that's orphan? I was <laughs> thinking. I thought he was watching this girl. I'm like, yo, that's a weird-ass way to start this movie. But yeah. Okay. You don't start. She was literally writing this letter for like two minutes of the intro credits. Yep. And then you show him peeking look at who knows? And Who then knows? she also let's make sure you remember that she said, uh, "I know it's just days before Christmas, but I hope this gets to you like days." I just want to just make this real quick. Does it at any point tell you when actual Christmas is? No, because there's no, no timeline in no. this film because even towards the end, which we'll talk about, you know, there's spoiler. There's no Christmas time really yeah, at all. Like, at all. Even, like they don't even sell it. Like even at the end, there's no sell- tree lighting. There could nope. have been a cute little tree lighting at the end or something. Anyway, nothing. Sorry, yeah, he's so, hiding in the bushes. Hulk Hogan's hiding in the bushes, which with a horrible toupee, mind you. Oh yeah, we'll yes. talk about this toupee. This 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 toupee should have got second build. It, it should have. It should have definitely been uh, higher up on this cast list. But, anyways, Hulk Hogan is. We don't know where he is. Like that's right. the whole premise. The audience doesn't know what's going on. He's sneaking into this mansion, and he starts fighting all of these people that work wearing, at the mansion while uh, wearing a uh, camo. All While wearing off. commando, I, I f- yeah. totally forgot about that yeah. camo outfit. So he's he's, camo outfit he's, no he's taking down. There was a, there's a chef. There's uh-huh. a, a limousine driver. All yep. of these people at this mansion, and like you said, it's a great trope of these people who are wearing normal, I guess, just like normal job outfits. So yeah. like a chef, and but they know karate. Yeah, all of them. No, they literally they were screaming. That's my favorite. It's one of my favorite tropes is that there's always the one guy who comes out screaming and does a bunch of fancy moves. That way to really <laughs> signify he's the martial artist, uh-huh. and you know he knows martial arts because he's screaming and doing uh, flying spinning kicks for no reason. Yeah, and it and it just com- to be easily dispatched. By the way, this movie starts off strong, and I'm gonna and I know you're probably thinking no, no, it doesn't. But in the sense of you got some fighting, you got some movement, because th- from here it some just goes movement. all downhill, <laughs> all all downhill. Okay. So we eventually find out after the fighting is done. Because, listen, that's like, I think that's one of the only few moments that there's fighting in this film. There's some other that's spots some here and there, but I, I believe start off strong, you still have a horrible movie. Yeah, I don't know what you're it. talking about. There's, yeah, there's some other fight scenes in there. We'll talk more about them. But so so he's fighting. Scrooge, tell me, what, what do we find out after he's done fighting? Well, we find out that actually what this all was was some dumbass exercise that he ended up orchestrating uh, orchestrating himself because he's just so filthy rich. So meaning that he just pays his servants to attack him every morning mm-hmm. and make sure that his reflexes are ready, which I one actually thought was hilarious because well, you would do that. I right? would do. I was I'm gonna going to say, do that when I get that Jeff Bezos money. I am going to pay people to attack me to make sure that my game is always on point. But listen, the th- the fact is there's difference. So there's a difference where somebody could come and attack you. He's going onto his own property yes. and fighting people. Yes. Isn't that like an extra step? Like, wouldn't you want to like wake up in the morning and then just be like, 
hey, I'm hiring you guys. Attack me at any time. Sweet. This man is creeping onto his own property. So it's it's not really, like, catching him on edge, really, you know? Well, when you add it like that, yes. But then also remember he's sitting there at one point at the mo- in the middle of the movie, sitting there moping. We'll get to that point. When he's sitting there moping and the guy tries to attack him while he's just mope, sitting there moping. Uh, and I think I just call that dumbass, lazy writing or direction yeah. while he's walking <laughs> through his own. Because remember... The very first, I think one of the first things he said is like, "Who shot this?" Or like, "Why were they shooting it like this?" It yeah. looked like this really awkward student the film. Ca- that's what camera I was saying. Work. The camera is following him. Very similar. There's a movie that came out recently called Birdman, and that whole film you is mean a- with Michael Keaton. Yes, and that whole film is essentially like how it's shot. I think it's only like seven or eight takes. Like the entire movie was just super long takes, like twenty minute takes really? where the camera follows people around and stays like it's it's pretty Never well done it, the director i believe also directed the revenant yep, with leonardo yeah. and it's the same thing and that's why i said in this film what the hell because the camera's following him while he's moving yeah and it just it, it almost really feels like a reality tv show like it's like weird i don't know yeah like point of view it's really yeah it's poorly executed so we find this out <laughs> And you his know, butler brings him the uh, dietary supplement. So we figure out yes. this guy is a bodybuilder, I guess. Doesn't even make it clear. The point, because it's like he's rich and he's starting his day, and then he comes over to a table that just has all of his items. I'm going to name some stuff. of these right yeah, now. Please, so we got please. we got the bulk builder. So the yeah. whole the company's called Blake's Way. So this is Blake's Way bulk builder, Blake's Way mass maker. Right, and yes, Baker, baby. What's my favorite one? Blake's Way chest chiseler. Chest? See, I'd I'd order that though. You would I, get the chest chiseler. I would absolutely get the chest chiseler. And and I think one of the oh my god, here look at this real quick. Is his is his face is is that is that CGI not like is that like real? Is that a real picture of Hulk Hogan? We're getting our analyst in here, uh, yes. Scrooge, yes, checking. Absolutely. That is, but look at how like fake his arms look and everything. No, it's got to be. It's probably just the, how they. Just think about it. They probably just quickly slapped this crap on to like four boxes. Yeah. And four things here, so it's like I think they just quickly got in there. Well, now that you say that, yeah, it just you were... also look. They they put the toupee on him to make sure that uh... Uh, they, he looked like. Is how he looks in the movie. Folks at home, we're uh, analyzing one of the uh, f- uh, f- one of the first subjects in the film of his supplements, and I would like to thank uh, Scrooge here, who is oh, a welcome. Hulk Hogan fanatic, to Which, clear some things up for us. To clear another thing up for you, the idea of him having a toupee doesn't make any sense to me in this opinion. Why? Two reasons. One, the man is known for being bald. That is one of the like. So literally, he was only he only had hair for pretty much the seventies and the early eighties. Steroids kicked in, and he started losing his hair. <laughs> he had hair. He did. He used to have hair, but all those roids, you know, make you look, look, Most people make them lose their hair. Mm-hmm. He So he lost his hair early 80s. That's eventually when he started adopting the bandana look. He started coming out with the bandana yep, on, yep, yep. and that became a signature look for the rest of his career. He'd always have a bandana on, maybe different colors, but the same thing. And I don't understand why, and I looked at all these movie posters, a couple of them, why they have him wearing a toupee, because it doesn't make any sense. To me, at least, because it's like he's so famous as the Hulkster, yeah, so the Hulk Hogan with the toupee, with, with the two, sorry, with, with bald, with the bald look. But, and like maybe the toupee means he's more family friendly. I don't know. Yeah, that's what, what that's why I'm wondering be. because it doesn't make any sense because it doesn't actually help. Because think about Santa. How often has Santa ever got hair? Yeah, he's always got a cap on too. Yeah, so, like usually. You know. Well, no, like think. Um, you ever see an elf? Elf, yeah. Elf with yeah, Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. Ed Asna. Ed Asner plays um, Santa. Right? Santa. Yeah, yeah. He's bald. Mm-hmm. I was just watching. Yeah, Rudolph. Santa is usually bald. I was bald. just You're watching um, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the original, uh, the original um, claymation one. And Santa's Santa, bald. Santa's bald. But most s- of the time, Santa's bald. I'm just saying the point is like, why wouldn't they use that up? Mm-hmm. Because he's he's got the bald look. I don't know why slapping. It. Yeah, the... you're right because all, uh, sometimes they do have Santa with long. He'll have like long hair, but it's like slicked back. Yeah, you was, know. Yeah. So you're right. Like I, it's sometimes a weird choice. Right. Like well, then yeah, the Kurt Russell one, like on Christmas Chronicles, is called on Netflix. Christmas Chronicles. I've, I've never seen. It's that. a real thing. I'm good. Kurt Russell I'm, is. I'm good on that. I'm Kurt good. Russell is Santa. He looks great though. <clears throat> He's such a handsome man. He's got a full head of hair, but that could be because it depends on the depiction of Santa. But most of the time, when I think of Santa, Santa usually doesn't have a, a head of hair. Yes, usually. But then the you also have the, the, the uh, Tim Allen 
Santa Claus. Santa Claus, yes. He had full right. of hair, too. Okay. Well, okay, so maybe it could go back and forth. I just, what I'm saying is, he looks freaking creepy with the toupee. Yeah, he's already man, bald. Make yeah, the man bald. Yeah, he's already you know? bald, and if, he looks bald. He's, he's been bald, as, you know, like almost, the, that's what he's famous for. Yep. So why didn't he just wear a bandana most of the movie, and then <laughs> when he comes to be Santa, he just leaves it off? I don't know, I'm just, you know, I'm bugging out on it, because he looks so weird. Like, yeah. He Take does. someone like Sean Connery. It took me years to understand that all the movies he made as Bond, James Bond. Yeah, he was wearing a toupee. Oh, really? James, yeah. Sean mm-hmm. Connery. Every movie he played, James Bond, he's wearing a toupee. He lost his. He was starting to lose his hair at twenty-one. But uh, he, it became so normal for me that there's a ton of movies where he has a toupee and he looks good, and there's ton of movies where he actually is not wearing a toupee. Yeah. But I never looked at it like, oh, he doesn't have a toupee or he does have a toupee. I just looked at it as his head's shaved. And his head isn't shaved. Well, it's like, I look at this, and I'm like, yo, this looks fucking creepy, because he's like, this is also thin Hulk Hogan, because in the mid-90s, like he, he, had said, a, yeah. he had a steroid scandal that rocked the entire wrestling world. He had to testify in front of uh, judges and courts and stuff. And so he stopped taking certain steroids, so now he got a lot smaller. So uh, now, not only does he have this weird-ass toupee, but he's also kind of skinny and gaunt-looking. <laughs> so it's just terrifying to me. I don't know how he looks more family-friendly. Well, but, no, you know. this, looking through his older films, like Mr. Nanny on the cover, yeah. he's got no hair. Yeah. He's he's bald, but he's got, like, the, that yeah. fake long hair in the back, yeah, it's though. Called, no, that's real. The, the, I mean, you're talking oh, about cul-de-sac real? look. the back? Yeah, yeah. cul-de-sac. Yeah. Yeah. That is his real. Yeah. So he didn't become all bald. He'd always used to have the string. I yes. call it the string cheese or the cul-de-sac. So he'd have the bandana on, and he'd still have blonde yeah, coming around. Yeah, but he'd around, still have it, yeah. And he'd yeah. have a little longer, so it'd be coming out of the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, see Mr. Nanny. I think No Holds Bar, same thing. No Bald. Holds Bar. So I, I'm looking at it where the first introduction, because I can't see from... I want to see these films because they made three of them. They're called Thunder and Paradise. Have I, you heard yeah, about these? I've seen. I've seen the first it's one. It's pretty much trying to be like Rambo, but for yeah, Hulk Hogan. It's awful. I saw the first It was so bad. So... Is does he have the toupee in that film? It's I been think so long, long. I don't think he does. It looks like he has long hair on the cover. He so has I a believe blonde, uh, he has a uh, bandana. Yes, yeah. but the first one that came out with his hair is Secret Agent Club, which is the one I showed you. That is the first introduction, but of the toupee on the cover. You know, you said on the cover, you're like, is that the same guy? Yes. You have one guy who's wearing the toupee, one Hulk Hogan wearing the toupee, and the other yeah. one's bald. So. I don't know where this. Maybe Jordan Belfort had some kind of, you know, interference with this. Or so I, I, someone may, must have told him that maybe you'll be a more uh, believable action star or a star if you wore a toupee in some of your films. Maybe they just didn't want. They didn't, didn't think that a bald, like even though you're so popular and whatever, mm-hmm. that probably the bald look didn't make you look, you know, respectable as a leading man or something. Especially in a family friendly film, it had to be some, something. Put some something hair on. Do, yeah, it had yeah. to be something dumb like that because you know how stupid that most of these executives think on some of these movies. And yeah, if I must have thought that he didn't look friendly enough, maybe that was definitely it. And then maybe it's also because, in this case, you know what? Let me think about it. In this case, let me do a, an AC on you and start getting really, you know, analytical. In and stuff. depth. That maybe they were thinking he's supposed to be this pretentious. Uh, selfish billionaire millionaire you never actually know how rich he is but it would make more sense for him if he's that vain to have hair uh, so that way he looks more you know pretentious and snooty as opposed to being a dude who's half bald and pretentious and stuff it just, we could you know, go on for if, if, yeah. if anyone out there we should start a patreon and we can go on for hours about hulk hulk yeah, hogan's hair, hair choices yes. that would be amazing actually we're gonna have a whole podcast on it we're gonna have, it's gonna be the hulk hogan Hulk Hogan hair fiasco. Perfect. We'll we'll think of a better name though for sure because wow, the hair fiasco is uh, I I'm not feeling it. But wow, that's that's racist. Couple of years later, Three Ninjas, High Noon at Mega Mountain. He still has the toupee. Playing Dave Dragon, by the way, which we are going to watch because Dave Dragon. Yes, we are going to watch that film because I loved it as a kid and I'm so excited to see my childhood hopes and dreams get crushed. So. Let's go on from here, though. So, like we said, he's in his backyard fooling around like a little child, just having fun. And from there, they go on this, like, weird, I guess all of his buddies and him are going on this weird, like, drive out to nowhere to play. To play, play paintball. To play paintball for some reason. Nothing's explained. Just... And a cop is just sitting there. He's just waiting. Who is who's the cop played by? It is played by Clint Howard, who is Ron Howard's brother. You might have seen him in a bunch of different stuff randomly. He was in, uh, there's for horror heads out there, he was in a film called The Ice Cream Man. The Ice Cream, oh my God. 
Sounds you need awful. to, yeah, I'll show you the cover soon. What I've seen him in the bad. most is, uh, if anyone out there has watched the rest of the development, he's been, which is also something oh, that okay. his brother was involved in. He was the narrator. Uh, there was episodes where he was this weird hippie guy who was hanging out in a tree. And so he was in it for a little bit too. Oh, so, Clint Howard. Yeah. So, but yeah, he's a cop in this one. He's a cop and he sees Hulk Hogan and the boys doing their little driving around. And he believes that they're terrorists with real guns. Yes. So they chase him, and by the way, Hulk Hogan is driving a Hummer, yes, and all of his H1 friends Hummer. Are, yep. You knew exactly what it was. We have a fellow Hummer driver yes, in the building. Yes, I love my Hummer. And he's driving, and he's driving, and he starts to get chased by Clint Howard, and I think he does call for backup, or maybe it's just Clint Howard. No, he does, because he's like, he there's terrorists, there's terrorists, uh, I need help, I need help. So and they they go from there, and what happens? Uh, Hulk Hogan's car breaks down, or something? No, no, even better. Like, because this this whole movie has no logic to it. He just instantly, instead of being like, "Oh, the cops are behind me," let me just quickly talk to him. Let me tell like, him that. Like in this case, like guns. I know a lot of people yeah. are like, oh, "I don't want to deal with cops," but like in this movie setting, there's no reason why you just shouldn't say, "Hey, yeah. these are paintball guns." Hey, if he said. Oh my God! Like I'm on probation right now for yeah. that crooked scam or something. You yeah. know, you know. And, and he, he literally, how it goes is, he literally starts laughing about how he's gonna outrun the cops for no reason with this dumbass grin on his head. Because he's rich and he's powerful and, and he's, he's funny. And he starts shooting paintballs at the cops, and then eventually just tells his friend who's in the car, uh, "When in doubt, get out." And he just jumps out of the car. I don't remember. You don't that. remember that? He I just do literally not says, "When that. in doubt, jump." I uh, say, "When in doubt, jump out." Uh, and he just run, he just hops out of the car. The other guy takes over, and then he runs off towards the mall. So his Hummer just explodes or runs. No, in. no, no. His buddy who's in the car. Oh, drives He it? passes over to the uh, driver's side and just drives Did I it watch, off. I don't think I watched the same movie as you. I think I was watching a different movie. You must have been watching something in your own head, man. I don't know what you most of the time what's going on that noodle. <sighs> so he starts running into the mall. Yes. And at the same time, we are introduced to Ebner Frost. His weird friends that that I said kind of looks like Loki from uh, oh, Tom Thor. Milston. Yeah, he kind of looks like him, but his hair is like parted weird. It has that like weird. Yeah, he's like skinny and tall, and he's just slimy. Yeah, it's looking. like a weird combo between a um, a bob and like a caveman haircut. Yeah, it's it's weird, but I guess he is his henchman. Yeah, he he's is a scientist. Yeah, he's Ebner Frost's scientist henchman. Doctor. Which we'll we'll, we'll yeah. loosely use the term scientist because we don't know if these people are actually doing. No, they, just, they, just they just keep throwing the, the yeah. They just keep throwing the word science and scientists yep. around while they're wearing lab coats. The entire movie, <laughs> by the way, they never change. He never changes into another nope. outfit. Is the it's same. the only one you can afford. Sometimes it's how it is. You know, it is especially when you're getting paid by like a multi billionaire or whatever. Yeah, on his mansion. Outfit. So. This is a weird shot to me because so it's shot at like the bottom of his yard and you see up at the top is the mansion and it's like yeah. a downhill slant mm -hmm. and you see him walking the scientist. We'll, we'll just call him Loki. You see the scientist go over to this old man that's like hung upside down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so uh, the scientist, uh, it brings over a TV which has frost. Why doesn't Frost just come outside? Literally, they're like five feet away. Well, that's so like that's what makes it even weirder because they, I guess, they try to make some joke about the guy being a germaphobe, and then maybe that's why he's never doing anything. Yeah, yeah. But it's never fully clear because it's just weird. It's like just the, it's not really specified. It just never makes any sense. Well, how about this? Save the money on the TV. Tell your Loki friend. Tell him yeah, like if he's your henchman, just, just tell him to tell everything yes. that you're gonna tell him. Yep. Right? You don't need just... the TV. But anyways. So the uh, the scientist and, and and Frost are talking to this old man that they hung upside down. This this plot is like this. The way this is written essentially is only to introduce those weird characters. Yeah, literally, because he, this guy's upside down for reasons. There's nothing really specified at first. Then he calls out one by one the 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 discount rip off Mexican rip off Batman villains that come out one by one. Yep, yep. yep. One looks like a gerbil. A uh, ball gerbil, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then and he's and, always goofy, and like I said, he has the he has the body, uh, what would be the word, body language, the body temperament, like his mo body movements, I guess, of the flying monkeys from Wizard yeah, of Oz. Was... <laughs> it's very like gooky yeah. and weird and ridiculous for no reason. And there's a dude in a safari outfit. Why I don't know. He's in a he's in a safari outfit, and then the third one is this weird theatrical. Uh, woman villain who's like wearing some weird dominatrix gear 
laughing, has sunglasses, and she has electric powers. That's the I whole don't, thing. Like that's not even. I'm not <sighs> even. Like we're not even exaggerating here. I think Jordan Belfort bought stock in electrical practical effects, and I think he's just getting his money worth. His money's worth because we see a lot of that in this film. I There's a lot of electric. Thought about it though, given the fact that Jordan Belfort most likely both. As you were talking about earlier, both uh, made this movie as a tax write-off. They're also doing a ton of the dr- a ton of drugs at that time, so that makes sense why they made such a horrible movie. That actually does make sense, and so this it- film should not be watched sober. By the way, this film <laughs> should definitely not be viewed sober. But yeah, you get the trifecta of villains for some weird ass reason. They come out one by one, like they're like hiding in the bushes, waiting to be called yes. on. And so, you have the one nerdy guy who has the glass. Of course, he's got glasses. I've seen him in other things. I, I need to look up who this guy is from. But he, he, he he's been in a, in a bunch of other things. Or maybe I'm just thinking of this film and trying to repress it. But yes, yeah, so you're just trying to think of happier <sighs> days. Trying to do my friend. Yeah, and then so yeah, like you said, there's the bald guy and the woman and whatever, whatever. So we cut back after the introduction of these crappy characters. It, we see. He's walking through the mall. He's yep. he actually has the bana- bandana on. Did you notice that? Yes, he did. He put yes. that, you know why? Because most likely he probably didn't feel like putting on the toupee that, 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 day. that film day. Yeah, that he day. Just slapped the bandana on. It's probably too hot out. You know, that he California just, he just heat. Just didn't feel it. He probably you know, I didn't feel like putting the you know um, the uh, the adhesive glue or whatever they use to stick it on his head. So he was oh. like, I'm just gonna throw a bandana on. So his whole plan is, I'm gonna run into a public mall and then go in. I guess like. I know in malls have this. It's, it's like the back rooms and stuff, mm-hmm. like where all the the cleaners go and all the the people yeah, that run the stores. And yeah, so workers. I, he's at which this 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 like scene. They look like they just went to like the behind the scenes of like a studio or something. And it's well, anywhere, yeah. It's a very bland looking scene, but he's looking around, I guess, and the cops are right behind him. Mm-hmm. Clint Howard, by the way, plays this doofus police officer. Uh-huh. Like he is playing um, Don. Was his name Don Knotts? Yeah, you're, you're talking about in the Andy Griffin show. Yeah, he's yes. playing Don Knotts' character mm-hmm. in Andy Griffith, he, and which is funny because his brother was in Andy Griffith which, as well. Uh, uh-huh, big joke. That's where I was kind of <laughs> pulling it around, but he's playing this just goofy, weird mm-hmm. cop this entire film, and Hulk Hogan, they're getting chased, and Hulk Hogan slides into a room mm-hmm. And changes into Santa Claus, and what happens? Yeah, because he finds a Santa Claus costume just lying around, and we alluded to the fact earlier that the mall Santa for this mall just mysteriously doesn't happen to be around because yes. reasons, and you know the parents and kids are angry, and this one chick is trying to find a mall Santa. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, we were yes, inter- introduced to whatever his name was from that 70s show, The Dad. Uh, Don well, Stark. Yeah, he, briefly he's the Lenny, one of the elves. Lenny, aka Lenny's, Lenny, Lenny the Leinster. And we get and, yeah, we get introduced to him. It's a very brief thing, but it, just so, it comes you know, back around. Yeah. So he, excuse me, he finds a Santa outfit just for no reason. So he puts it on. Poorly interacts with the cops when they catch up to him. It's just a really awkward ass conversation where he looks like he's never you know acted before in his life. Horrible acting. And horrible. Just horrible. Acting. Oh Starts to get God. away, and for some reason, a kid just happens to pop out of nowhere with, with his father. Like, oh, Santa, I found you. And, and they notice the camo. So the camo, and, and there was a paintball red on it, which is like, which will oh. it'll come back later for some reason because they think it's blood near the end, I guess. But so. He, you know, he's getting chased by the cops again. He runs down this one hallway, and the only place he figures he can find, there's a bunch of doors. He could have hid behind a door or something. He hides in this, like, trash yeah. chute. Yeah, trash chute. Do they have these at the mall? I, don't know. I couldn't tell you. It was, I don't know what this, this mall looks familiar. I feel like I've seen it in a California based movie before. It's probably, it was so. probably in um, Terminator 2 or something like that, similar to it that. It could have been. It I might mean, have been. I, it looks familiar for sure. Chopping Mall. Remember we watched Chopping Mall and that oh, mall yeah. was in a bunch of, yeah, ma- so I think similar. maybe that was one, but it was a big one. So maybe because there's so many floors in it, they do have a trash chute, but whatever. He's hiding in a trash chute for no reason. And he's literally a foot away from the two cops with his finger sticking right mm-hmm. there. But, you know, hilarity ensues because he's like, oh, we can't find this this bastard. So they give he's up. like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hiding. I'm so good. And then, of course, things start falling down the trash chute. The janitor starts throwing out all this stuff. He throws mm-hmm. out a giant life-size Santa. Santa. So, of course, oh, no, here it comes. He gets hit in the head, falls down the chute, flies out of the chute, hits his head again into a trash can. On the trash can, And yep. he's knocked out. But... He's not alone because Who's sitting right there? Lenny, the Leinster. So Lenny, like we said, played by Don Stark, his 
I guess his most famous, I don't know, maybe he was in other films, but I know that remember from his, a that lot of people show, yeah. remember from that 70s show, he played Donna's dad. It's freaking Afro, right? Bob, yeah, Bob uh, Giamatti. Some, some, some Bob like, Giamatti? Some I wouldn't like, know because that was never, not really my show. Some, it's some g- generic, I'm going to look it up right yeah, now because I'm interested, but it was some Bob Pinciotti, that's what it Pinciotti. was. Pinciotti. Very, very Italian last name, but he's just sitting there. And he's waiting, and he makes a makes a split joke, and so he wonders who this guy is. Checks his wallet. Of course, the first thing you do mm-hmm. when you see a Santa fall down a, a trash chute is yes. not not call the cops because this guy might be no, not even say hey man, you like, like really make sure he's okay, and say he goes for that wallet. Goes right for the wallet, and I think we would all do. I think you know. I yeah. think you're, you're talking about getting deep with AC, right? Yeah. You know, I think Bob penetrate deep. He is. He is a. Uh, he is a symbol of our, I think. Greed. Sigmund Freud called it the uh, the ego. I, be, I believe, oh, okay. or like ego. you know, the good sho- the good and the bad guy yeah. on your shoulders, the devil and the angel. The good and the bad. I guy. think he's the devil. Yeah, yeah. I think he's devil the devil. And angel. I think he. I think he's portraying that because that's his first instinct, is to get mm-hmm. money. Then he realizes that this is Blake, Clark. I forgot his name. Oh, wow. I don't, yeah, it, I don't it, it's definitely Blake, but it was something so generic and stupid. I believe it was Blake Clark. So he looks at any and, and, and he sees like just says Blake. Yeah, he just see, he sees the man's loaded and everything, and he's about to go and run off. And then who wakes up? Oh well, this is one real quick. This is hilarious to me because he goes on like a meltdown of he's so rich because he found some other dude's wallet. Oh yeah. Like okay, there's cartoon co- rich. Yeah. Like oh my yeah. god, like, yeah, like it wasn't out. like he found a few hundred dollars. That's okay. That's cool. Like if I found a couple hundred dollars just sitting on the floor, I'd be really happy. I'd be happy, but I wouldn't. But be... I wouldn't be grabbing it and screaming. I'm filthy rich. I'm yeah. so filthy rich because the idea is that yeah, he's got this guy's wallet, but that means that you have to actually forge signatures or you have to actually steal yes. someone's identity to try to even use their. He's credit not cards. thinking about long term. Yeah. I don't think. And, I think he's thinking short term. And it doesn't even make sense in this for the movie. Like just sitting and watching it. Like, why would you be screaming, I'm rich, when you probably can't even use these credit cards because yep. it's someone else's? you can't else's. use it. And then also the FBI is going to be after you. You're yep. using all these fraudulent So, anyways, whatever. whatever. Yeah. He starts waking up, of course. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so glad you're okay. But I don't What's know who on? I am. Like, that's the whole oh, premise no. of this film is he forgets who he is. But for some reason, of course, well, we know the reason. Uh, Lenny tries to convince s- him he's Santa. Yes. That's the whole premise of this whole film is that Lenny's kind of a... He's kind of like a shithead. He's like a Kai, uh, he's like a con man kind of. He's just kind of like yeah. leading him on, leading him on, and all this stuff. And you know, we'll get to a part later when he's at the orphanage and they're at dinner, and you know, like he kills him. Yeah, yeah. And then he buries <laughs> him. Yeah. There's, there's. We'll, we'll talk about. So that. he convinces him enough that he's Santa to he, then yep, to they shove him out, out to pl- uh, play Santa in the uh, in the mall. We get a couple, well, not a couple, but one famous face here, one of the little girls. It was Brenda Song, yeah. who actually, did you know, I don't know if she's married, but she's in a relationship with Macaulay Culkin. Yes, I did see that. It was really freaking weird. Because it is nothing weird. against Macaulay Culkin, but he looks like a crackhead most of the time. He did, but he he's clean now. He's better. That's good. I've seen him on a couple of YouTube yeah. specials of like certain YouTube creators, and like he's actually evened yeah, out. He's, he was looking rough. He's he's, he's a lot better, okay, and he and he talked about it, and he said, you know, like life's a lot better now, and especially with her, which is. Great well, I have seen what you're talking about. Yes, that was weird. But yeah, so he plays Santa for a little bit, and to the to the just a really weirdly uh, enthusiastic crowd. There is such what you can tell is obviously whoever's in charge of filming that day or those days said we just got to get as many extras as we can, many people, because there's just a weird ass lineup of just there's dudes, so many people, there's, old men, there's old dudes, dudes by themselves, no kids, because every time they 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 uh, they cut to the people in line that when they're cheering for Santa. For anything, there, there's a bunch of just dudes like AC said, dudes we're watching with no himself. children, no kids, with no just kids, there. just a bunch of random people. And you knew they were in line too because they're trying to put emphasis on the fact there's a super long line because yep. Santa wasn't there. Yep. And so, so while this is happening, uh, Bob, aka Lenny, uh, the elf, we could just call him the elf, I the guess. Elf, okay. You know, let's just keep it nice and simple. The elf essentially ends up going to an ATM and trying to get the money. Right. Out of the ATM, but for some reason, I guess this futuristic late '90s world, there's a thumbprint scanner. Yeah, for some reason, which uh, I don't know they why. They don't even have that today. Yeah, I don't even know why I just said enter your pin, 
and he didn't he wouldn't know the pin so then it was like well, you're not gonna get your money you're right they could have saved that money it's, just, it's been as simple as saying enter your pin and he couldn't do that and then they would be like yeah well we can't give you the money yep and Whatever, then also so. while this is happening there's these two goons that With were introduced to a him. famous face even famous more famous even more famous than brenda's song is a famous face that i recognize because <laughs> i've watched so many action movies over my lifetime that i can tell when there's certain people certain henchmen that they use certain stunt performers Simple terms, it's stunt performers. Either in action films, the actors have their own stunt team because they know how to work with them better, mm -hmm. or they just use the same group of stunt people, depending on the film. But So I noticed one of these thugs who are scheming to steal this donation bowl that they have at the Santa, the, uh, the Santa visit place is a henchman that fought Jean-Claude Van Damme and nice. probably my favorite film of his, Hard Target, and I actually had to stop the movie to show AC what I was talking about. Yeah, and I did see him, and yes, I can confirm that is him. Yeah. So you same, are correct with dude. that. That's right. So they are trying to steal all the donation money, of course. Mm -hmm. they got to be evil. The one super dude's got evil. a dare shirt on, which is funny. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, it was that. ironic, right, of course. They're Very like, ironic. Oh, super, well, so... They, they drop uh, it, though. Yeah, they, because he, they're idiots. He tries to... They, cartoon wise he yeah. tries to put it under his shirt and act it's like giant a, too yeah. it's like a giant globe so mm -hmm. it's obviously huge he's not that fat it breaks and they draw attention to it and of course for no reason uh the hulkster is like i gotta do something about this and so he gets up you know he calls him out on it of course a fight ensues and he, <sighs> he ends up beating the shit out of these two guys in santa land throwing him everywhere and everybody's loving it. They're like, yo, Santa's beating up somebody. Dude, everyone's having a great time. Now, granted, we mocked this, but I would give anything for any of those times I waited in line at uh, whatever those things were called. Santa, the Santa things, you know, yeah, Santa mall, visits yeah. or Santa Play, Santa Land. I would give anything to have been standing in line one day for that. And Santa just started beating the shit out of a couple people. That would have been gold. I would have loved that. Especially if the dude had a dare shirt. I would really like oh, yeah. that, too. Oh, yeah. Anyone wearing a dare shirt, I mean... They had a frick, Kick you know. their ass, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially if it was one of those dumbass uh, hipster hats, the ones with the little beanies. If I ah. saw some dude like that, I'd say Santa kick his ass, please. I think I've seen you with a beanie before. The ones where you like hang it half off your oh, head? Oh, not those. Yeah, I'm not I talking feel like about I've the ones it. where you've actually put it all over your head. I'm talking yeah, about people that yeah. wear like half off their head. Oh, hanging off. and Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. No, no. For or all fedora. Those... They yeah. weren't wearing a fedora. <laughs> uh, my lady. So, my lady, yeah, tip it. <laughs> Um, so Brenda Song gets her thing as well. She kind of just chimes back in and says, hey, that's them. You know, Hulk Hogan runs after him, beats the shit out of him. Beats him up, and then all of a sudden, oh, he's Santa's awesome. It's so great. And then we get this weird, this weird interaction where uh, Lenny guides the Hulkster outside like he's, he's a celebrity he's trying to oh, oh yeah, because he sees the he sees the orphanages the foundation save the orphanages whatever, ah, yes. and that guy's him oh we need to go there we need to go there we start going outside and everybody follows him they're, they're still cheering the two of them for it's some like, reason don't you people have a job like go home doesn't Jesus make any Christ. sense the same people so they're all cheering so then we, we we go from there to back to dr frost and he's showing his henchmen he this is where we kind of learn that he's more of a germaphobe. Remember, he's spraying yeah, he's all spraying this crap him. and all of this stuff. And he's showing him on this weird, like, oh, God, what do they call it? Um, NORAD, right? Map you're talking about? It's like a yeah. map, but I know NORAD, I, I think that's like some kind of map. It's where it shows you, like, the geological yeah, I think things. Yeah, GONAD. Oh, go now. Oh, the fun. gonad. For all our uh, science heads out there, they'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's I like a sense. weird, like, thermal map. Yeah, it's, it's for no reason, but it's really no dirty. Reason. It looks like someone spilled, like, a giant coffee stain all over it. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any sense. It's got some X's, and, and he starts alluding to some plot of, of course, here it comes. Oh, I need all these buildings. I need all these places. Because I guess me. there's there's crystals underneath he everybody. He didn't say anything about that, remember? He, did, he doesn't I really guess. say it, but we learn. Yes. But we learn. But we learn the hard way. We already. do. We do. So we don't really know what's going on from there. And so he sends his, his Loki-looking henchmen to the orphanage. And this orphanage, like we were talking about, is weird. It looks like a church. Yeah. It's it's it literally just does not look like what you would expect an orphanage is, but no, it's because it most likely was just some some church they were given permission to film at, you know. Yeah, so I so they they tie a chain around a, a statue and then pull it off for some yeah, reason they, just they, to mess with so, them. So you know, so much intimidation where the guy goes to the uh, uh, Doctor Jekyll there goes to the door. Do well, yeah, we'll call him Doctor. Doctor Jekyll. Jekyll talks to the lady, you know, all creep, all, all real rapey and stuff, really weird. 
and then they, they hook up the, the chain to the, the statue, and then they yank it off, and they're just starting to get away when all just of a sudden starting, yep. the car uh, jolts, and it's revealed that the Hulkster is holding the car back with the chain for no reason, for, for nothing, no reason. Nope. And then he just lets it go. Mm-hmm. He just lets it go, and then it's on the next, like, oh, what? and he meets the, the lady and the kids, and I'm like, oh, what, what's happening here? I yep. Mean, so then they get familiar with each other, and yes. and uh, which includes a young uh, Mila Kunis. So we got young Mila Kunis in there. There's another kid as well. He was in uh, a couple films as well. His name. He's talking about this little ginger boy, which he looked familiar to me too. He was. He was in uh, Adam Wiley. He was in uh, a Disney Channel film that I liked as a kid called Under Wraps. He was also in Child's Play Two. He was in a bunch of stuff. Um, but anyways. They're all orphans at this orphanage. Santa goes in and gets comfortable with them and just kind of, I guess, just shoots the shit and hangs out with them. It's kind of a yeah, weird scene. It's... He, like, basically says that he's Santa Claus and everything and that he's going to help them, you know, d- d- I guess defend them from... Yeah, he doesn't his... make it clear. I'm just checking to see what other things the kid was in. Yeah, but he just is kind of just, I don't know, just hanging out there. We have no really clue why he's there. So I guess this this whole premise is I'm Hulk Hogan, I'm Santa. Yes. I don't know that I'm Hulk Hogan. Right, which doesn't make any sense because you really no. want, like, when you really start getting technical, none of this makes sense. He's a rich billionaire, millionaire, whatever. Uh, he hits his head. He's gone for a couple of days, so there should be, like, news reports, something. Mm-hmm. A anyway. very important man. Like More he fan, says, yes. when Don Stark first meets him, the elf, when he first meets him, he goes, Blake Clark? whatever the hell his name is yeah. he's like the richest man in 10 states yeah. like people would yeah. know where Rich. this man and is. then you have his trusted team of people that are his servants and stuff and they wouldn't be like yo what the heck happened to our boy yeah and so well maybe they just need a day off so honestly but anyways he's <laughs> so there's yeah that'd be hilarious oh well our our, yeah, our yeah. Uh, boss is missing we're so sick we're of just... getting beat up yeah so I'm, I'm, but yeah. so you have no reason why he shouldn't already be found, like, by someone else. Mm-hmm. Then he's like, I guess I'm Santa. I have no other recollection of whatever, but I, I guess I do, but I don't. Because, like, he's talking normally. He has no other problems except for the fact he just thinks he's Santa for some weird yep. reason. And Lenny the Elf, like, he's his whole thing is, like, pushing this false narrative. and yeah, like that he's he, Santa on him. Pretty much. And this man, we don't know if this man has a family. We have no clue what what Lenny's deal is in this movie except to be a greedy little bitch. Yes. You know, like, there's nothing Language. else in this film. So they have dinner. They end up having dinner together as well. Oh, so it was so stereotypical dinner of that. Forced, a lot of forced laughter. Forced and, stories and laughter. So I guess they, they end up staying the night as well, mm-hmm. and they never really explain this. The morning comes. Oh, my God. Lenny the Elf is in a bunny costume. Did you yes. did you yes, notice I, that? Yes, I did. Yep. He's in a bunny costume, and they're all eating breakfast and whatever. And what was the first thing that they noticed? What happened was he, he walks yeah, in. He right? walks out without the Santa costume on. So then the kids freak out, or they're freaking out. And what's his name? Lenny tries to cover, and he just covers it with, uh, uh, Mrs. Claus doesn't like it, so I just wear it to, for formalities or whatever. And yeah. And the kids yeah. are just like, okay. Okay, Good yeah, literally that's the shot. That's the girl, just, like, looks up, goes, and then she, she goes, looks back down. Okay, and that was it. And then it's just, he sits down, and they just start talking, and there's clips of Lenny uh, trying to hide the fact that they have a cereal Power Crisp. Yeah. This Power Crisp that has his face oh, on Oh, so that's what you were talking about, Power Crisp. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. I was joking about that, yeah, because it was Power Crisp. That's the name of his Rice Krispie. This man has cereal. cereals, not only supplements, but the, and also, why is an orphanage buying bodybuilding cereals? right. And then why wouldn't you immediately already see, like, oh, hey, you're the dude on the box, like, to begin with. Like, even before he hit it, like, that's why. Yeah, even before you could tell, but. Whatever. No, he's Santa, so. Whatever. They get a they get a newspaper that says the title of the movie, yep. Santa with Muscles. Muscles! <laughs> oh, God. Santa so, with Muscles. So, San- so uh, Hulk Hogan's drinking a glass of milk, and he puts it down, and, of course, Lenny. The elf is noticing that hey, there's a th- there's a thumbprint on it, mm-hmm. and he could use that at the ATM sure, to get yeah. money out. Cause that's how that works. I guess that's that's how it works. But, anyways, uh, he ends up taking the glass from him, and then a reporter stops by the house because I guess this is how the hell did did they know who there, saw this and who no, reported this? That's actually to the news? when you because I wasn't even thinking about that. That's 
<clears throat> I wasn't even thinking about that. That's right. They just showed up to this orphanage, like, without any, like... Uh... So, okay, there. hold on. You just <laughs> wait a minute. You just opened up a whole thing. So, the news came to find Santa with muscles at an orphanage. Yes. Uh, orphanage. Um, orphanage. 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 And they didn't at all investigate what the hell happened to this millionaire, billionaire, Blake, Shelton, or the hell his name is. Yeah, yeah. They didn't, but they were able to find Santa with muscles at an orphanage, uh, an orphanage down whatever street. No one knows where. Nobody He knows. just was there. And they're like, oh, we need to have an interview with him. But they couldn't find the, the millionaire, billionaire. They, sorry, they, they didn't care about They the couldn't care less. Being, no, it's because close. I guess also you don't know how many days have passed because there's no timeline with this movie. No. It's just the next day or whatever, and he's not home, and so whatever. That's fine. Oh, God. But Orphan. Listen, the limitations of this film, like we're looking into it a little too much, but the limitations of this. No. You have basic family f- films, especially around Christmas. You have like mm-hmm. Home Alone. I mean, even family films. You have like The Goonies. You have like all these staple Family films around this era, maybe uh, similarly around this era Mm -hmm. as well, they're cohesive. They don't leave a lot of room for plot holes. This whole film is like written as if a kid wrote this screenplay. Mm -hmm. That's really how how it comes across. So after this, our homie the elf takes that glass and tries to use it at the fingerprint scanner at the ATM. And then who pops out from behind him? Oh, Batman villains. They pop out, yank them and crank them into the... uh... Ice cream truck. We didn't yep. clear that up. They and have an they, ice cream truck. They've yep. been driving the whole time. The ice cream truck. The undercover ice cream truck. And they talk to him by his first name, so we know. Okay, he's familiar. They know, we know him, and here comes the TV. And yeah. The TV and shows then the up. Frost. Mr. Frost is like, "You owe us money," and of course he of course owes us money. money. That's such a. And he's like, "Oh, I'll get rid of him for you, boss. I need to get rid of the Santa with muscles because he's just causing such a problem for you and your the super villain gang of mm-hmm. electric lady." But that doesn't Beaver really man. that doesn't really go anywhere, does it? No, none of what I mean like what part? Like, like the part oh, that, of no, like no. of the elf like basically helping Frost to get No, there was just remember that throwaway, oh my god, I can't believe you did this and that was it. Like no. That was it, you know. There's a lot of the time else. it could it, like it could have been like, you know, Lenny like thinking like, well, maybe I could turn him in and get money, but also, you know, he has a lot of money himself. No, it was a quick throwaway and, scene. No, it was, it was completely just... thrown away and just to show how evil Frost and his thugs so are. So evil. So, meanwhile, he's... I guess this one girl who wrote him the letter, who's the orphan at the at the orphanage, she just goes and hangs out at a church for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she's at a church by herself. And he just walks in, because I don't think there's anything before it. I literally think that he just oh. walks in, and she's there. Maybe this, like, is a combination of, like, a church and an orphanage, because it does kind of look I like think, a church. No, I think it is. Or maybe they were filming. No, it, it, it what it is, is it's a church. And they're just calling an orphanage. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe the orphanage shots are shot in a completely different location. And for this, no, time, it's probably like they're. Ch- I've been in churches that are like that setup where they have one gi- oh, giant yeah, room that they're usually room. hanging out yeah, with. Yeah. That's like usually where they have like, um, let's say mess uh, mess hall. I meant more like a. It's like when they have meals and stuff. They serve meals. Yeah. And because I've I've actually I've done like martial art classes for kids in churches before. You just kicked their asses in church. Oh yeah, they were. So, I took care of them. Well, they had that same kind of thing where they had a mess hall. Where they had the kitchen right next to it, and yeah, they had big yeah, room. I've seen those. So yeah. I think this where they probably filmed it was a church, okay, which is a straight up church. And for some reason, they're, some reason they're calling it an orphanage. So, so she's whatever. like talking some random bullshit. I don't even know about like a Christmas miracle. We get some yeah. singing Hulk Hogan. He's yes, laying he's singing it down for something for I don't know why, but he is. And then there's some weird, like, miracle happening in the window, which is all weird. That was weird. At the end, like, the light goes out in the yeah. window for some reason. Doesn't like, was sense. that Jesus or what? I, I hope not. I, because if it was, he would have delivered me from this movie. Yeah, what is he doing in this film? Would, you know, pretty much. So it cuts back, and they're all having dinner again. And then something breaks through the window. This reminded me. We didn't watch the whole thing, I don't believe. But it reminds me of Halloween 5. Because in Halloween 5, there's we watched a little bit of that, right? Yeah, it was, but it was the only. It was like they were all like sitting in a minutes. room, and then somebody threw like a rock through the window, and it says like "Give up the girl" or something. I don't know if we watched that. I've far seen enough. movies that ha- that's happened. Before, that's pretty so much I don't the, whole, seeing the whole thing. It in Halloween, so yeah. So they throw the head of the statue from the front of the orphanage through the window, and of course you go outside, and it's Loki and all the 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 goons, yep. and there's some fighting here, right? Oh, this is great because it makes no. Oh my god! So Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan comes out, and they have a little really bad uh, one-liner exchange where he's like, I've seen something stupid about it. It's not Halloween. It's Thanksgiving or whatever. I don't know. 
Really stupid. Oh, yeah. He said, he said, it's not Halloween, it's Christmas. You know, go trick or treat somewhere else. Yeah, it's like, I. <sighs> because I guess on Halloween, you can throw things through people's windows, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. So, but the guy's like, okay, well, here you go. I'm going to give it to you. Patient uh, Hulk Hogan. And he just randomly does a couple spinning kicks with a stunt double who doesn't even look exi- the worst wig. anything like the dude <laughs> who has a wig on. You can clearly tell it. But it just spinning kicks him like three times for no reason. And then turns around and goes back to the car like his job is done. Like, okay, he's he's got his lesson. And then they get into a poorly executed fight where he yeah. throws them all into the van and mm-hmm. they drive off. Yeah. And we cut from there to the elf and Santa... Damn it! They are, they're like at the mansion. Remember, they're like sitting at the at the base of the mansion because they're trying to break into Doctor Frost's oh, yeah, yeah, layer yeah, yeah, yeah. of sorts. Yeah. And so they go up. Of course, hilariously, he throws the elf over because yeah. he's like, "How are we gonna get yeah, in?" How so gonna... funny. And then he does like this weird ass, this weird ass camera angle as uh, Hulk Hogan one, like yeah. leapfrogs through the air like a kung fu movie, flies through the yeah, air and then yeah. lands on the other side. It was it's odd, and I think it's where they didn't realize that. Because when you make a film called Santa with Muscles, you have to show that he's like a tough guy. They don't mm. really show it that much in this film, and no. there's one of them. He threw him over. Like yeah, it's supposed how to strong be he is. Yeah. yeah. So they go up to the mansion to figure out what's going on because everybody's up. I guess there's all these scientists yeah, walking walking through, through, the, through yard. the yard, talking to each other in lab coats. By the way, yeah. just, just talking to each other. And they hide underneath a cloth because hilariously enough, the dude covers everything up because you know germs. That's right, I germs. Guess. So many germs. Because that makes sense. Why would you have hedges and stuff if you hate germs? Just no, don't have them because you have to actually make those. People have to clip them. So why would you even have them made? If you were just going to throw... Whatever. I mean, it, it kind of ties into now with all the germaphobe stuff with, you know, COVID and with, everything you that's know. going on. Yeah. You know. I mean, you know. So. No. You got to talk to me about it. Actually, we no, I mean, every time I go, to, here. I go to Walmart, yeah. every time I go to Walmart, there is just everything sold out. Like, yeah. all of because the... Because if there's a dangerous situation, you know you got to get your ass to Walmart to get some toilet paper because TP your as ass well. has to be made, <laughs> taken care of the most. <laughs> So if you can't wipe your ass, can you really live? Hey, this just teaches us that America is all about butt play. So it we is. learned something right I here. I mean, every day I thank God for butt play. Thank you. So speaking of butt play, uh, Hulk and his buddy go up to the house and they see him. Of course, he's standing in the window. Yep, doing his evil, evil thing. plan for some. Because that's just how villains do it. Like I would, yeah. I've always wanted to meet a real <laughs> life villain to see if they explain how. Like, because most of the time when people just you know screw me over, they never give me a detailed plan of how much they hate me. Yeah. And what they're gonna do to me? It's usually just they just do it. They and do they never, it. They yeah. never admit. They never admit to how like they're being evil to me. So I always wanted to meet a real life villain and see if they're actually just gonna take the time to monologue. Well, this is and, some like James Bond Scooby Doo shit. Where yeah, like, you but know, it's bad. You, you meet the villain. Yeah, yes. and it's. And he's describing, but there's also a kid that's there who is from the orphanage earlier. Mm-hmm. He's got a slingshot. Kid, what the idiot. fuck are you going to do with that slingshot? slingshot? I just got to ask. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. But that comes back in later. You know, you don't just put something in a film and then not come back to it later. No, you never do that. Cause, no, absolutely not. You never, like, just put something randomly and never touch upon it again. That's not how that works. Yeah, exactly like, you know, like when uh, the elf got, you know, thrown into a car by the thugs and was talking to him about the debts he owed. Yeah, you never, you know, you never... Uh... You know, I uh, I also forgot to tell you, we see that uh, I got the test results back. Really? And it's definitely breast cancer. Oh, I thought you were going to say you're 100% a bad bitch. You don't know what I'm talking about? No. God, you've never seen The Room? No. No, I'm joking. I've Sorry. seen The Room. You know what I'm talking it's been about, a long time, dude. I don't. Okay, well, there's the one joke about how literally the mom in the movie says, I got the test results back. It's definitely breast cancer. Oh, and yeah. then never talks about it again. She just doesn't bring it up She's again. got breast cancer, yeah, but they yeah, never, they never talk that. about it. They never bring it up again. And here's that was a, it. So it's the same thing. Here's a contrary opinion. I am not a fan of that film. People love it, and there's this cult behind it. I think. I wonder that, why, because you're a poser. I think the fans. A scumbag. The fans ruin that film. I'm sorry. The fans completely. What ruined fan? it. Who? How? How? Who? What? Where? When? Hold on. We gotta talk about this. Who? Who ruined the it? The fans of the what room fans ruined that name that their, film. What are their names? The cult fans. I'm Which talking ones? about. Where are they? The ones that go <laughs> to these movie screenings and like say it word for word, and like it's just. I don't know. Why? I, because I, I think, do that. I think, I know, I know. You're a fan of it, but I think it's I, I do easily. that with movies in general, though. You hate me? I think it's huh? not, 
it's not even to me it's not even a bad movie to me like i'm not saying it's a good movie but i don't think that like how when people put it up there with like samurai cop miami i don't think it belongs in there at all I'm so glad I got all this on record because I want everyone to know that AC said that The Room is not a bad movie. It's not in the right. sense. So, just, so of, you know his judgment is at. So because he's trying it, to defend. So that's fine. It's becoming a meme status. It's on the okay, record. it's it's like a meme film, and that's why I just I'm not a fan of it anymore. It's on, it's I'm like on. a hipster. I liked it before it was oh, popular. Oh wow, you know, so. that's what it. Is. Okay, so that's what it is. You're just jealous everyone else got onto it now, and it's not as. And now fresh. people just talk about it 24 seven. Like that's the only bad film they've ever seen in their life. Oh, that's okay. Now it's we embarrassing. Got, we got down to it's it. Embarrassing. We, it's because AC is a bad movie snob. I've suffered through the shit. My my whole life so you know bad, i'm here to talk about it real bad movie snob that's the, that's what you're gonna be called now we were talking about earlier <laughs> real quick side sidetrack i was saying about the first time i ever saw a movie and i knew it was painful was son of the mask yeah theater wise the first film i ever saw in theaters that i thought was absolutely terrible and i was like done with movies can you guess what that is i have one too and i'll have you at okay. guess for me um i'll give you a hint blockbuster yeah. Like a blockbuster film. Okay. How old were you, though? How would you give me at least give me a range? Because that could be anything. God. I was 16. 16 or 15. 15 or 16. Okay, so it was about a decade ago. 2012. Um, 2012. 2012? Yes. Okay. What is it? No, I mean 2012. No, 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 no. I don't think that came. I think it came out a year earlier. Or did it come out in 2012? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, no. It's The Avengers. I thought the first Avengers movie was the most bland cookie cutter action film ever i said it's not actually that good i really said go in the theater yeah and i said in the theaters to my buddies i'm like because they were all they were head over heels for this and my yeah. friends back in the day they were huge comic book fans so they loved it yeah. but i looked at them and so for somebody that doesn't really know comic book films like i didn't really know comic book films at all so when i went into like spider-man the first spider-man 2002 i loved it because it's i think it's a great movie it's written well the characters mm-hmm. are well they you know you can remember at the end of that film, as a person who's not into comic book films, it's just not a good movie. Maybe for somebody who likes the comic mm. books, it's fun. But that was where after I was like, okay. I And I think that's where the decline. I used to go in the movies all the time, and that was the decline right there. And I'm just like, I'm not suffering through shit like this ever again. Because that fucking movie is terrible, and I will always say it to this day. Uh, might We might lose some fans Bad out there. Bad movie snob over here. Absolutely hated. Table. So what year was your uh, experience? Uh, I'll give you, okay, it was a hint. It was a comedy, and it was 2008, I think, it came out. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Was it, like, knocked up? Wait, was it, like, a rated R one or a PG-13? Cause you, uh, you I'll give you that. It's a comedy in 2008. So. I don't know. I no, nothing. I, I, I wish I had. I've, I've been. Uh, one of my favorite questions to ask any movie snob is, did a movie ever make you walk out of a theater? Yeah, yeah. Mid, mid. Did movie? you walk out of this? Film? No, no, just because I think I, I kept holding out, thinking it was going to be funny at some point, and I just I sat through it, and it was a total mistake. Okay, I saw people. By the way, really quick, we're sidetracking like crazy, but it's I, okay because we'll be back. We'll be back on it. Don't worry. It, it'll, it'll, it'll not still, much. Don't worry. Much. Santa with muscles isn't it going anywhere. <laughs> I saw so Once and Upon a Time in Hollywood came out last year, a year or two ago. Yes, I saw that. I theaters. saw that in theaters. People in front of me walked out. A couple other people walked out in the theaters as well. And I was, I'm not surprised. I was confused. Like I don't. I, it was fun. It's well, fun. You, okay. But... Real, so before you, you guess what mine is, I, here's my thing about that. I enjoyed it because I enjoyed it for a couple of things. I like the atmosphere. I like yes, the acting. Yes. But only could a man like Quentin Tarantino literally make a movie about nothing for three hours. That's and then get jerked off for it. Because yep. if I if I went and made a movie about nothing for three hours, they'd probably be like, What the hell's wrong with you? I like those films like okay, I'm not a huge fan of Tarantino, but I like hangout films. Because think about yeah. Pulp Fiction, that's hangout Jackie it Brown's is. also yeah. kinda of, things happen progressively, but there's also hangout films like Clerks, if you've ever seen that before. Long time Dazed ago, and Confused. Man. There's very similar yeah. slacker kind of, you know. Yeah, but like you said, the atmosphere is killer. I didn't really like the story. It was really stupid and no, the yeah, ending was dumb. So yeah. I was like, okay. So that's why, yeah, it was like, it was sub, it was like, it was, no, I would say average. It was pretty good. I'm going to say it's pretty good. Yeah. I got my opinion of, uh, you know, how I don't like how Bruce Lee was in it, but that was, That know, was so dumb, dude. That was, that was so dumb. It just it pisses me because that was just him being a cock because he was always like, oh, it's a joke. 
you know, it's Quentin Tarantino. I'm like, no, man, because if you want to do something funny, like, make it funny. What you were doing was you were literally shitting on the man because you're jealous of him. Because if you listen yeah. to him talk about it, he's like, oh, Bruce Lee was a prick, so he needed to be brought down a peg. I'm like, what the fuck do you get? What the fuck? Like, like, you're literally you're doing, like, this is, you want to get me running on something. I get pissed about it. Is that the stereotype has always been around about the big American guy, big white guy, takes on the Asian guy. The little and the Asian, Asian guy, guy is yeah. always doing the hua, running around, yeah, doing yeah, kicks. Yeah. And then all it takes is one, you know, throw one punch, and the, the American guy's the winner. That was what he was trying to uh, literally do uh, t- to Bruce Lee. And yeah, I'm like, fuck, yeah. I'm like, honestly, you know, fuck you, Tarantino, because yeah, Tarantino's you're, you're a your, shit, you know. dude. I don't like his shit anymore. And I, I was so excited. So... That was one of the main reasons why I wanted to watch that movie, because I was excited that, for the guy. He had, he had his, his mannerisms and his voice on. Uh, it was he did, on but point. he acted over the top, though. He didn't look... As soon as he took off the glasses and the jacket, he didn't look anything like him. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, that really kept it together. Well, the whole thing is, like, Brad Pitt, you know, beats him up, and Brad Pitt's this badass whatever, and the whole yeah. premise is that he could beat up Bruce Lee. He's, like, the baddest guy in the world. Like, yeah. he's a badass, like, yeah. stuntman, whatever. Was... But what were you going to say? So your oh, film that yeah. you, you thought... It's all right. People... I mean, this is... I, I, when I... Real quick, when I listen to a podcast, I actually listen for those kind of stuff, those kind of stories. And Just to, to divert other. and go... Yeah, in general, because yeah. you, can, you can talk about it, the whole thing, but yeah, 2008 comedy, what movie do you think it was? I'm pretty sure it was 2008. I'll I only really think about... I think about Super Bad, Knocked Up. Those are, like, rated R comedies, though. Yeah, but you know my humor. I mean, you'd think I'd, you'd think I'd hate Super Bad or Knocked Up. Oh, is it's probably an action comedy then. It's a comedy. You, oh, I don't. I wouldn't. Can call you it name comedy. somebody in the film? No. <laughs> okay, then, then, then I have no clue. Okay. What is it? Meet the Spartans. Ah, uh, okay. So and you know it was what? A parody Here, film. Yeah, yes, quick, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, very loose. I, I do not call this parody film. Let me let me check real quick to see what year it was. I think it was 2008. I'll never forget it because my parents and I saw the. Yep, 2008. We. <laughs> We we saw the oh, trailer and the trailer looked funny because they took everything that it was remotely funny and put it together and that was it. Mm-hmm. Literally the entire movie is just references, yep. not in a good. It's literally just one reference after the other. Mm-hmm. I remember sitting there in the theater and I w- we were all cringing like this is just god awful. We need to do a, par- a parody film like there was epic movie, there oh, was a it, date oh, movie. Yep. Meet the Spartans. And Vampire Sucks was one yes, of Yes, Vampires Suck, dude. Oh, my God. They they made all those. But anyways, awful. let's get back to Santa Wood yeah. Muscles. Um, <laughs> where are we? <laughs> so we are at the part after where he talks to the little kid at the church. Yep, we passed that. So we got back to that. And then from there, he beats up, like we talked about, yep, the okay, guy outside of that too. So now Santa and the elf are sitting outside with the other kid and he's kind of he's giving the really cliche like family friendly theme of like you know the one dude's like wanting to like you know use the slingshot against him and he was like you know don't do that that's naughty yeah Yeah. weird choice come on come on don't use that in a a kid's film please and says, you know, that's naughty. And he was like, well, that guy's, you know, that guy's me. evil. Yeah. And and the kid has a good point. This yeah. dude is literally out to, like, destroy the orphanage and everything like yep. that. Orphanage. But Hulk Hogan has to have that family-friendly message. Yeah. So you know? no naughty. So he tells the kid to get lost with the elf. He, t- he gets in closer, finds out his evil plan. If he wants the, he wants the um, orphanage because of whatever's underneath it. It's like, ah, oh, big reveal. And we find out that there's a bunch of crystals, I guess. Yes. Crystals. Yes, you you heard him right. He and said they, crystals. Yes. That yeah, explode. I, I wasn't tripping over my words. These are actual crystals. crystals. In a crystal cave underneath so, the orphanage. So Hulk and the elf and all the orphans go down to the crystal tunnel underneath it for for some reason. Yep. I, I don't I, I don't understand it. <laughs> completely but anyways they go down there and it's this weird kind of reminding me of like catacombs if you know what catacombs are <laughs> no i i don't i never heard of them i don't know it reminded me Is of like hair product yeah okay but anyways they they so they go down there then they come back up and then who's there loki's there and he chases them up to like the tower of the yes. the orphanage i guess yes and they have a really anticlimactic you know just dumbass battle of them just you know uh, playing grab ass up in the uh, up in the tower there or whatever, he beats him up. He beats up Doctor Jekyll, and then there's a, a robotic Santa that just somehow somehow in his clutches grabs 
the Hulkster grabs mm-hmm. the Hulkster and pushes them off the entire tower, off the building. Like, does it make any? There's no way. There's no way. He's just like, oh, oh. His, his we don't know just, where he is. Yeah, yeah. Just, the, 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 this robot Santa literally, just which we moves see in over. the beginning. So yes. it's already, you know, like it's he's there, but it literally is just. It's just a uh, a decoration, but it literally grabs him from across, like across the, the tower, and guides him to fall off the entire. Uh, the entire town. And of into course, a trash can, there's a. Into a garbage truck. And of course, there's a garbage truck, and he's right. laying there. It looks gross. And what is right next to his head? One of his uh, protein powders. Supple- yeah, supplement products. So he wakes up in his mansion, and he's like, you know, well, what a crazy dream. Where yeah, was he's I? He's back. Oh, you know. Oh. But he still has a Santa suit on. Uh-huh. And, uh... Yeah, which is crazy because you think his boys would have taken that off of him and let- make him lie in his beautiful. Uh, clean sheets with yeah why know, would they trash keep him in the and everything and he make smells because yep. like he's like he's, what, spraying, what is he spraying his stuff or whatever mm-hmm. he's spraying like that for breeze in the air or whatever yeah so he goes and tries to call the lady at the orphanage because i know he's just trying to bang that lady oh yeah at the he orphanage. wants that he wants that orphanage pee real quick yeah there's no there's no introduction to a wife hulk doesn't know nothing like not, not even a girlfriend which is really no. weird i mean this yeah. is this giant ass like really beautiful house had to have been the fact because given how little this budget was AC, you're talking about this. I think it had to have been if it was Jordan um, Belfort. Uh, he was an executive producer. Probably he one thought of his it was fr- one of his. Either his houses or one of his friend's houses because that would have been simple for him. To... Super easy. I mean, maybe it was even Hulk Hogan's house. I don't know. Might how, have been, I mean, he was pretty freaking rich too, though. Yeah, yeah. At that point. I feel like he'd blow all his money on like Coke and steroids and stuff. But... No, he was doing that, but he was also always getting money in because True. no matter what, the Hulkster always came out on top. Yeah, I mean, he's making movies like this. so obviously... Oh, yeah, he was... He was... Real good, but you know he called my one of my favorite parts of this movie. He calls the lady, okay, who answers in a really weird robotic way, and it's revealed that through some tomfoolery, all of the discount villains are literally set up to be delivering a fake message recorder to him of the woman saying this stuff. So I Meaning guess that they he, were just standing there waiting yeah. for this phone call, so that way when he called. That he was gonna get this. Well, I think he machine. was he was recording what the woman was saying when when remember in the beginning where yeah. they go. Yeah, but what I'm to saying the, the point is is that he wakes up and calls them. So, but they're just there because it shows in real time in that the they're movie. manipulating. They're the manipulating message. this yes. message. That means that they were what sitting there waiting for him waiting to wake for him to up. Call. You're right. Yes, that's You're what right. I'm saying. Oh, okay. So that's why it's, it makes even less sense and more stupid. Is like that meant that they were just standing there waiting for him to call. Yep. Which would have been an entire day and a night, or whenever he woke up, or whenever they found him in the um, gu- uh, dump truck, yep. and then put him in his house. So it was at least a day, so that means that they were just <laughs> sitting there all day and all night waiting for this phone call. So I guess we presume that 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 uh, Loki escapes after he throws him off yes. the thing and throws mm-hmm. him into the garbage. He escapes the house for some reason while everybody's still in it. Think about that. They were yeah. all still in the yep. house he while this happened. He doesn't like kidnap he escaped. any of them. Nope, he just escapes yeah. and then they wait for the phone call. They do the phone call. Yep. And they're all just kind of waiting around the house. They're all bummed out because, you know, I guess Santa was the best thing that happened in this orphanage. Yes, I guess. which makes sense because you and only have, like, three kids. and Lenny the elf is still there for some reason. Yeah. He's eating a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, he's... He's what a free, bomb, yeah, he's freeloading. He's free like no one like where's his house where he lives? He's just in this orphanage for no reason. Cause why wouldn't they be like, well, if he's not Santa, who the hell are you? But whatever. It I matter. mean, this man works as a as a as a I'm gonna guess a seasonal elf. I don't yeah. think there's probably no other instances of jobs that you could be an elf full time. But yeah, he's a part time seasonal. For those, except for those uh, all around, all around, all the year round Christmas shops they have in around uh-huh. the country. I was thinking of like a Christmas porno or something like that. You could easily get. Uh, how does? Anyways, hold, hold on. Um, wait a minute. Hold wait, on. Wait, how wait. would a, how would a Christmas porno give you work all year round? Well, imagine this. You spend an entire year filming Christmas pornos and think about the companies. When it's Christmas time, they have so much to put because out. Because you're just filming nonstop Christmas pornos throughout the entire year, right? You just have so many different versions of, you know. That's what I'm saying. Santa's well, slutty about elves. It. Christmas, it, you know, it, it's all around the world. It's not sure. in every country, but it's yeah. all around the world at different yeah. times, maybe. So you're telling me that they filmed like 365 separate Christmas-themed pornos. There's a lot out there. Or 365 um, entries of Santa's (laughs) sluttiest elves or something. Hey, that could be our next film. You know, we're doing Christmas themed films. Yes, literally stocking (laughs) stuffers. stuffers. He's coming down your chimney tonight. Oh, he's definitely coming somewhere. (laughs) Bring the milk and cookies, baby. Oh, God. So so... they're all depressed because Santa's not there. 
Right. And uh, from here, it's just it's it's such a mesh at the end. You don't even know what happens. Door explodes. Bad guys come in. Everybody all comes decked in. out, including my boy, who is looking like a Fu Manchu wannabe. I can't even. It's so Steven Seagal stunt Steven double. Steven Seagal I said. stunt double. Who it took a little bit, but I find out it is uh, Brutus Beefcake. For anyone who's a wrestling fan out there, he was a famous wrestler and from the eighties and nineties and a huge. Um, I, I, the reason why I say not just uh, I say fan and not just friend because he was a friend of Hulk Hogan, but he was always there for him. So like anything he needed, he was there. Like so he was always his buddy. Yeah. He was like his cheerleader. <laughs> he was always down for what he he could sell you know assault anything. So obviously, Hulkster was probably like, hey, you want to be in this movie? Yeah, yeah you want to be in this movie, brother? And brother. he's like, oh yeah, absolutely, let's do it. So he ends up being Fu Manchu, bad guy. These are all just disposable henchmen for yep. uh, and Hulk Hogan to fight at the end. Hazmat suits and stuff, and then they. Her everyone downstairs to the crystals or whatever, and during all this, the Hulkster gets uh, out of his funk and tells his his band of his band of heroes, the, the the dudes that haven't changed their outfits since the beginning, of the same outfits. And I <sighs> said, "We're gonna do this. We're gonna go on a mission. We're going on a mission together, man." Yep. And, and they all like, put on these like hazmat suits or something too. Like everyone... well, the bad yeah, the bad guys have hazmat suits. Yeah, huh? and the one dude. The one nerdy dude with the glasses has like a uh, almost like Indiana Jones. He has like one of those like pith helmet. Safari hats or is that it's called a pith helmet? Pith helmet. I'm sorry. I'm not educated I'm like you. That's okay. You're a ginger. <sighs> got to got to accept the limitations where I have them. Right. So I guess Santa finds out about this whole thing because he he I guess he was talking to the elf on the phone yeah. and then of course Loki picks up the phone. So then I guess they. Head over to the house. This part I just don't really remember. It's just kind of I okay. was checked well, out. By he then. well, as you usually are. I usually have to take care of the ending because by yeah. then you you take the wheel. You're in a different different dimension. So Scrooge yeah. take the wheel. It was uh, you know he gets the he gets his crew together for a mission. They show up. They dispatch you know a couple of his henchmen. You know of course oh just so they're just so efficient. The kids end up locking Doctor Jekyll in the freezer, which I was hoping they were going to kill him because I thought that'd be hilarious that they just freeze a guy to death in the freezer. But anyway, so his band of, uh, his band of brothers there help him take care of all of the, uh, the henchmen until finally he confronts, he confronts, um, uh, Frost, Frost in the basement who's just wandering around in a hazmat suit for some weird reason. Not even like looking for something, but he's just wandering around and they come to this confrontation based off of a revelation that was so shoehorned into this movie we even talk about <laughs> that at one point the black guy sits uh, Hulkster down and tells him that he oh, used to be God. an orphan at this orphanage. Uh, orphanage, there we go again. This orphanage. He used to be an orphan there. And not only Hulk he, Hogan was an he orphan. He was an orphan. Not only was that, and I guess meaning that the black dude knew he was an orphan. He was new Because he I guess he worked there. there his whole life right. or something. They so, didn't really tell you. No, it didn't explain it, but I guess he knew that the whole time and for some reason just didn't whatever, it makes no sense. Then the next step is not only that, but then Jack Frost there, he was an orphan yep. too, and they were best buddies. And there's a shitty picture yeah. that he shows. Yeah, it's of so just two bad. young kids. Just that, two kids. Two young kids. No one, no one knows who they are. <sighs> and so then that plays into the when the last confrontation when he's like, we used to be buddies. We were friends. You know what that? And he's like, yeah, you're right. But that's not going to stop me. He calls him Ebby yeah. or Ebby. something? Yeah, Ebby. Ebby. And like, he remembers like, oh, just all of a sudden he remembers Ebby. Yeah. Like calling him Ebby. So he says... You know, oh, that's yeah, that's great or whatever, but not gonna stop me. And he goes running into the the crystal cave, and they have this weird confrontation where it ends up them grabbing giant crystal dildos yep. out of rocks, like not like nothing, like just grabbing these giant crystal rocks. They start fighting with the crystal rocks. The kids are down there cheering them on, <sighs> and eventually he they they knock off of his uh, his hazmat suits. That freaks him out because he's a germaphobe. Yep. And then they finally you know take care of business, take out the uh, the pith helmet guy because he's an idiot. And then finally, of course, of course, taking out the crystals sets off something crazy. Like a booby trap, like an like Indiana a, like Jones Indiana movie. Indiana Jones booby trap. And the whole place starts shaking and, 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 and freaking out. And they start losing it. So they got to hightail their ass up, up stateside. And it's this weird shot of them running with obviously the cameraman just chasing after them with the camera in hand. And they finally get outside, all of them, including the henchmen or whatever. And the whole orphanage... Uh, gets destroyed in some weird ass like sci-fi electrical, uh, just, like 
destruction of where it's like zapping and collapsing in on itself. Yeah, it's and like, I can tell it's a miniature work. Yes, it's miniature work yes, because yes, they obviously yes. didn't have the. They had both no money to obviously make a real destruction scene, mm-hmm. and then that just made it more efficient for them. So there was obviously miniature. Well, because they don't show the characters in interacting the same frame in front with, of with the the rubble of the house miniature destruction. Yeah, the, so. the rubber. Uh, the, what would you call that? A miniature rubble or something? I don't yeah, even know. miniature rubble. Yeah, miniature yeah. rubble. So sounds that's like destroyed. A, sounds like a rock band or something like a metal yeah, band. That's destroyed, Miniature and they're all sit, stand there. Oh yeah, it's great. We did it. We destroyed the orphanage. And they're <laughs> like, well, we don't have a place to live now. So and, and uh, then the cops show up, which is our friend Clint Howard. You know, of course, his car is destroyed in a cartoon fashion. His car is destroyed because earlier we didn't talk about it. Oh yes, one of the best things where they had a second so, uh, yes. chase scene. So Hulk is on the way to the orphanage. Yep. And on his way to the orphanage, of course, the cops are going to chase him again. Again. What does this cop pull out? They they try to set up a traffic stop to stop the Hulkster. And not only do they stop at that, one of the guy takes out a fucking RPG, a rocket power grenade launcher, out of nowhere. Rocket just grabs power. a rocket power grenade launcher RPG. Is that, that's where they came up with the name for the show, Rocket Power, probably. Was Warfare Rocket Power? Probably. You think possibly. so? Yeah. Yeah, you think you think the rocket show about power. skaters was about, you know... Why else would it be called that? Uh, no, makes sense. Makes sense to me. But yeah, they, pulls He that pulls out. out an RPG and literally shoots it at Hulk Hogan. <laughs> And he just misses it because it lands and hits Clint Howard's car, which of course explodes in a cartoon fashion where it's just destroyed, you know, in a way where he can still drive it and he's okay, <laughs> but he's still dirty. He's just dirty. I would not drive that car. After he's just dirty. It. So later, yeah, of he's course, just, he's yeah, cartoon yeah. filth. He's got that like cartoon uh-huh. like Looney Tunes hair, filth. His hair is um, frizzed a little bit, mm-hmm. and he's just got black uh, black soot all over him. So it's like he's fine, but it looks like an explosion. So he shows back up later with this destroyed car, and they're doing you know, oh, you know, freeze and whatever. And then the the um, the news people show up, and they start giving him credit for taking care of these villains or whatever. Which these villains, when they come running out of the um, running out of the uh, orphanage, are just standing there mm-hmm. with um, with the uh, with the black guy and the other person, like they're just like waiting patiently to just be arrested, chilling. just chilling, like yeah. no reason, just yeah. waiting patiently to be arrested. And so then, you know, they're all standing there, and they arrest all the bad guys. And Clint Howard's fine with, you know, taking the, uh, taking the, the good press for to capturing the bad guys. Yep. And then it's just goofy, like, goofy. We just have uh, no place to live. Ha 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 ha. And then we come find out that what's his name, Count Chocula, Count uh, uh, Doctor Jekyll there. Which he should have been dead because yes. he was in a freezer. Should have been dead. He was in a, he was locked in a freezer and the entire building collapsed. But he was totally fine because they started wheeling him out and he's frozen, which also makes no sense because he was in the freezer for like twenty minutes. Yep. Like he might be cold, but he's not going to be frozen like comically frozen. But anyways, who cares? Yeah, Hulk whatever. makes another joke. They're like, "Oh, where the hell are we going to live now?" And he's like, "Oh, I know a place. I know a place." And, and the next yep. shot is uh, hubby, hubby or whatever the hell his name is, Irby. Abby, Abby, Abby Abby's, Abby's house. Abby's mansion is now turned into an orphan orphan um, palace with Lenny the elf living there for some reason trying to tan. Uh, Hulk Hogan doing some stereotypical uh, dad stuff where he's got this weird outfit on. And then he, they go to look duck, at duck, a goose. They go to look at a telescope and the telescope shows all of the thugs. All the thugs in stereotypical prison garb of white and black. Yep, stripes. Stripes. Even got the cap, yep, I even think. Even got the cap, even which is like the, the old time like back in the 40s and 50s. And then on top of that, the chick has a <laughs> skirt, has a prison skirt. So it's like all it's all completely off and they all have a nice big laugh and then thank God the movie's over the movie ends it's a it's a beautiful ending because it just ends and that's it thank god so scrooge yeah yeah this was your first time watching i watched this before was not really paying attention throughout most of it but yeah. i want to know what do you think about it my rating i would well this well, is also... well first just give me thoughts i want to okay. just hear the raw thoughts the raw thoughts just give it to me raw you want you want, you want it raw huh? yeah no protection yes so this was also my first time watching a Hulk Hogan lead film. I, yeah, I've seen really. It. Cav- yeah. You said you saw Thunder in Paradise, though. So that. that oh wait, no, you're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hold on. How about in recent? This is the first time in a while I've seen something else. I, I forgot. That was so long ago when I saw Thunder in Paradise. Yeah. That was like three or four years. ago. You can ago. discredit it. Just say this. No, no, is no your that first was time. I actually that one was so bad I enjoyed that one. But uh, okay, let me. Uh, we'll take that back. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen a Hulk Hogan led film. 
This was awful. Okay, this Absolutely. literally looked like nobody took any time to really think it out. It really was like at some point in the movie, he makes a joke about how if you're gonna donate to like the kids' uh, orphanage or donate, send them stuff, send yeah. them stuff, make it sure it's a write off. It's a tax write off. Ta- yeah. Tax write off. That's exactly what this movie feels like. Is a tax write off of a sketch that went on for way too long. Yep. Should have been over in mm-hmm. a couple minutes. Didn't know what the hell was going on. The acting. I mean, if it's about phoning it in. I mean, Hulk is just ridiculously awful. Like just like so. And do you expect more? You don't. I mean, was he okay in Rocky Three? Or yeah, no, no, in Rocky, no, because in because you know why? Because that's why. I I I I I I I I I don't always just start you know get on somebody's ass because given some people are just bad in general. Mm-hmm. Like in my opinion, personally, I don't think John Cena makes a good movie star. Because honestly, I got nothing yeah, against the guy. Really, he yeah. seems cool. He seems like a cool guy. But honestly, I do not like him as an actor or as, as a an wrestler. Actor. Yeah, yeah. He's just boring. He's mm-hmm. boring to me, and I don't think he's that charismatic. He plays like and the I, same character. Yes, yeah, and he looks movie. like the same dude every yeah, time. Every time. And at least with The Rock, like with The Rock, I'm not really like running to go see every new of his movies because yeah, they're, they're I'm not kinda, a fan. I'm it's kind of the same thing where yeah. he's doing. But when he first started, I liked it. Like my favorite. I got a poster right over there. That's my that's my favorite rock movie. You can see in the corner, the rundown, in the corner. Where? Literally oh. in the corner, right over there. Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. With Dwayne. So, uh, who's in there? <laughs> yeah, I heard of Dwayne, the Rock Johnson. No, Sean William Scott. That's yeah, and Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. And Roseanne, uh, Ro- no, Rosie O'Dar- uh, Dawson. Dawson. Yes. Okay. Okay. Like that was my favorite rock movie. But like he has a likable, charismatic personality that even if you don't really like him as an actor, what he he has charisma. He has. Yeah. A, a way to be entertaining or whatever. So like he he works. He can work. His thing is, in my opinion, is just he just keeps making the same movie. It, like he just keeps yep. making crappy movies. Yep. It's the material. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with The Rock's case, it's the material. If yeah. he has good material, he nails it. If it's just the same generic crap, it's just generic crap. John Cena, I like I said, don't think he's a bad guy. I just don't think he's a good actor. I don't think he's really has what it takes to make it that and interesting as a person. Same thing with Hulk Hogan. Hulk, yeah. yeah. I think that I think he's kind of in the middle, where I think given the right material, he's better, but he's just not cut out to be an actor. So like in Rocky Three, he was perfect because his involvement in the movie was he played him pretty much himself, but yep. just a different wrestling persona. And this one, he was called Thunderlips, and it was a in the movie, it was a wrestling exhibition where Sylvester Stallone as Rocky pretended to fight, pretended to fight the wrestler. And it works because he just pretends to be himself. And yeah. anytime he's he like cameoing himself, himself yeah. it, it works. It's it works, fine. Yeah. But him as because an actor. Because we actual, know him as that. Yes. And I feel like when he tries to. That's his strength. That's be playing different. To, yes, that's, yes, it's yes. playing to your strengths, is what it really is. And so when that when you do that, it works. Yeah. That's why, like, certain martial artists, I love them, but they're not really good actors, some of them. But if you play to their strengths, so if you know how to do certain things, and you mm-hmm. put them, write them in certain roles. Like give them roles where they don't need to speak too much or whatever. <laughs> where they just no, I'm serious. Like, yeah. re- like really, like take someone like I don't know. You're really into Star Wars, are you? No, not at all. But you know who Darth Maul is? He's the one who's got yeah, the horns and stuff. Yeah, He's yeah. played by Ray Park. Ray Park is a martial artist actor. He's done some famous characters, but most of them don't really speak. But the point is that works. He, like the point is you make it work. It's in this. So it, bringing it all back, Hulk yeah. Hogan is one of those guys where I, I like the persona Hulk Hogan. I like the look. Not mm-hmm. really a great guy, mm-hmm. but he's not a great actor. Yeah. And in any movie I've fully seen him in, it's horrible because he just doesn't have it cut out. And that's even more horribly bad in this one where it's almost like just – I can't even explain. It's almost like someone trying to really, really poorly lie to you mm-hmm. and going over the top. Like, oh, sorry, no, let me take that back. Like someone pretending to like you and going really over the top, like, oh, it's so good to see you, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, really going. That's, that's what I feel like his entire movie is with this one is that he's pretending to like you, and so he's going over the top. Yeah, it's fake acting. Where yeah. it's not even like it's not even like he's trying. If yeah, no, like it's not. Just... That, yeah, that's it. he's not even trying. He's not. It's not like he's trying and failing because he doesn't know how to act. It's like he's literally just pretending to act. Yeah, and yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. And it's not like he's smart enough where he knows what real acting is. I feel like yeah. he's just, like, making it up. No, like, he's literally in his head. He's thinking about what acting is. It's kind of like where uh, my acting coach once told me, like, the, the problem with, like, theatrical actors, which is they're good for what they do, but for film, being it's over the top yeah. is ridiculous because it's oh, not yeah. the same as doing stage That's acting. That's what this felt like. It felt like a stage production, honestly. Yeah, because when you're just – because in theater, you need to scream louder. You need to overproject stuff. You need to be over – and I'm noxious because you have to project that to the audience. To an audience. In the same room. Yeah. 
it's and not I through film, screen, you don't do the yeah. same yeah. thing, so it just comes off horribly. Yeah. So what about you, now seeing it again? Wow. Okay, well, I'll keep it short for our listeners at home, because I know they want to get out of no, here. It's for, it's, your, it's for yourself. It's been an saying. hour and 42 minutes. I think these people need to, nah, they're fine. Need to get out of here. Um, I hated this movie. <laughs> yeah. Hands down. Yeah, absolutely. I, but I, okay, so... I'm not going to put it at going overboard. I think still going overboard is the worst movie that, is, that we have talked so about. Oh, absolutely. 100%. This. this is no way close to that. No way. There's parts of this movie where it does feel like a film, and I'll give it that. Okay. I don't think... So when I think of films like this, I think of like Missing in Action we did. You know, you yeah. got Chuck Norris. He was a successful uh, martial artist, so yeah. he was already popular in one area, and then he kind of transferred to film. That worked a little bit. Whereas with this... You know, you can't just say that, okay, this man was popular in certain things. It's like putting the dude, uh, Phil Swift, the guy who does the... Um, oh, you mean the Flex Seal guy? Flex Seal guy. <laughs> it's like taking a guy like that who has a persona, who has like yeah. a socialite persona or whatever, celebrity, yeah. and then saying, hey, let's put him in film because people want... That's yeah, exactly yeah. how I feel. This was Hulk mm-hmm. Hogan. It was like people knew of him. Even kids who probably weren't even into wrestling knew who Hulk yeah. Hogan was. I, obviously, people just know him. Yeah because of who he is not even because he's a wrestler or anything like that yeah, you it's can't, the persona it's the celebrity yeah. you know you know Hulk Hogan you know and, the, you and know that, brother. that can work like I said Chuck yeah. Norris it can work Arnold it can work there's certain areas yeah. that it can work but this is just an example of the opposite how this oh, shit yeah. cannot work oh. and I'm really interested I'm gonna try to seek out Thunder in Paradise 1 through 3 because I'm so interested to see you him in an action I, role yeah, I think it amazing. might be better than this I, I'm honestly no, think the it would be the first one I this. saw was great because it was horrible it was yeah. a good horrible but it's been a long I want time, that. So. I want that good, horrible action. It should be on YouTube films. Yeah, we'll check it out. I think it's on Tubi, possibly. So I would say, wouldn't you say that we were both in agreement? This is a one. 100%. I would say I would I would actually give it a one point five because for me a one okay. is going overboard. I think one. Did we give say, one for overboard? I, we did. Okay, then I guess I'll agree with you on that. I would have to five. say it's a little bit more watchable. There is at one point I actually did have a legitimate laugh. I don't remember where it was. It was something just super goofy and like it was like overdone so many times. And I would, just, I think I was just like crying inside. So that yeah. laugh kind of just helped, you know, mm. a little bit. But like I said. Definitely a little bit better than going overboard. So I would put it. At okay, I, I'll, I'll agree with you on that one because still I think to this yeah to this day going overboard is the worst thing we've done on this hands show. down and I was I thinking about revisiting it, it recently Why? got a lot of time What's during wrong quarantine with you, you got... could, remember that whole thing the whole speech about oh I've watched so many bad movies for all these years you could watch something else why would you watch that? What is wrong with you? I've been finding myself recently. So you'd want hold on, wait, wait a minute. You would watch Going Overboard again, but you wouldn't watch The Room. Like what? The, what? The, what's wrong with you? No, I'd probably watch the The Room before I would watch Going Overboard. Okay. But listen, I've been lockdown mode, quarantine <laughs> mode recently. Uh-huh. I've been sitting there watching a lot yeah, of movies. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. the other day I watched a movie that was actually good for the first time in months, and I was like, holy fuck, why don't I like treat myself anymore? Why don't I like, I treat myself to something good? What'd you watch? I, I watched Ocean's Eleven and that movie is freaking uh-huh. awesome. So I watched that the other day and I was like, wow, I forgot what like a good the movie film is feels like. Because like. I'm so yeah. used to watching just garbage, garbage man. Garbage. Yeah, you can watch other movies. You do realize that, right? It's like, okay. I, it's, yes. Yeah, the, the, the it's okay. Rule. Don't, yeah. It's okay to watch good movies. It's but. okay. So, All right, yeah. so 1.5. 1. 1.5. 1. I would say avoid this. Yes, um, if you're a Hulk fan and you're looking for a Christmas movie and you want to see a young Myla Kunis and Brenda Song. and Which is a kind of a weird request. It is. So maybe just don't even talk to us. <laughs> you don't. have to. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. even talk to us. It's, it's actually very, just kind of, just don't even. Yeah, don't even very do that. specific niche thing. Like, I want to see a Hulk movie <laughs> that's also Christmas theme that has a young Myla Kunis and Brenda Song in it. Yeah, actually, you don't, know what? Just don't avoid put that in your yeah. dating profile. No, actually, we, you might want to. You know, you think that might get a couple? I think that might. Yeah. Okay. Actually. All right. I'll put I'll put it on there. Uh, but. Anyways, yeah, that's about it. I would not recommend this film. You probably wouldn't recommend this film. No, either. the only way I'd recommend this is that if you had a diehard wrestling fan of a friend and you both just got down with just making fun of just absolutely trash stuff that would be the only yeah. way. You'd have to have a certain kind of friend. If not, no, mm-hmm. it's not even worth it. You'd probably get to like five minutes and like that's it. Yeah, so. it is. I, I would say it's on the same level though as like T- 
Theodore Rex. I think it's like the exact yeah, same. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's the family friendly film, but yeah. it's also like really bad. It's really like, trash. Just hasn't yeah. hit that going overboard yet. We haven't hit, met uh, at Maker, and I'm hoping we continue that record. <sighs> I hope so too. That classic feeling. That classic. You know, when so you much watch classic. These, these, these films. So that classic. All right, Scrooge. Well, the holiday season has just begun. We've it got has. a couple other films that are on mm-hmm. our radar. Yes, sir. Uh, we're definitely looking we're at deck the halls. Silent Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two. Yes, sir. Uh, thank God we're going in the Christmas horror uh, area. There's also some other Christmas horror. Christmas horror f- movies are actually pretty big. So there's Jack Frost. If you ever heard of that, I have <laughs> Jack Frost as well. Uh-huh. Um, then you got um, Black Christmas, which is actually a really good movie. This is Sorry from '74. It was made by the same guy who made. Um, I don't think it was 74. It might have been 76. Same guy who made Christmas Story. So it's weird. You see Christmas Story. What? And it's like a family-friendly kind of goofy film or whatever. Then you see Black Christmas, which is about this psychopath serial killer stalking a sorority house full of yes, college girls. That, that was remade recently. Yes, and it was terrible. There's two remakes. There was one in the two, early 2000s, and they just made one recently. Yeah, I'm talking about the recent was, one. I remember seeing the uh, it has like trailer a, for that. It's got like two out of ten rating on IMDb. It's terrible. But welcome to Hollywood. So That's okay, because, you know. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go into the you territory. Think the room is not a bad movie. Oh my god, you're gonna hold that to me forever. <laughs> I, you know, don't but we're gonna do some Christmas horror for sure, right. and then and then we're also gonna probably look at other Christmas films. I think mm. we were talking. I'm about thinking about ones. maybe uh, you know, being able to put that cookie down. Now. Oh, jingle all the way. Yeah. That might be that's, that might be the Christmas present from us yes. to the listeners. Yes, absolutely, because that's one of my personal favorites as a, as a kid. That was same here. Yeah. I, I had it so on. I think that'd be a on good VHS. One for I, yes, I think I probably still have it somewhere in the basement. Yeah, hell yeah, that was yeah. a staple as a kid. So I'm still excited is. to revisit that. Kinda, it's gonna be a fun one. Mm-hmm. And uh, next week's uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two. You're gonna have some fun with because right you've on. seen the meme of Garbage Day, yeah, of obviously. Course. Garbage so, Day. So now you'll know where it comes from. Maybe. And actually, you won't know because it's so random in the film that it really has nothing to do with it. So. Like every other movie we've done. So. Exactly. So awesome. Uh, catch you later, Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas to you too, you oh, redheaded bastard. God, <laughs> yeah, red like the. What's red? Santa's suit. How about that? Wow. That would I was really going to say tinsel. Wow. I was thinking about tinsel. Tinsel silver. I was like, wait, that's silver. <laughs> hey, like Hulk Hogan's hair in this film. Not really. All right, I give up. Okay. I'm out of here. I'm AC. And I'm Scrooge. And fuck these movies. You know, I was thinking about getting into the steroid selling business, and I couldn't figure out what my first market should be. I was thinking about there's these nice kids down the street. You know, get them young, get them started early because, I mean, in this kind of world, if you're not pumping yourself full of roids and other synthetic, you know, means, what are you really? Like, I mean, are you an American if you don't, you know, jab a needle in your ass and get yourself pumped? I mean, I do steroids three times a day and I couldn't feel more, you know, better. I mean, I do have a couple holes in my wall from...